Thank you. Thank you. Where was I? We're about to talk about Nitro. Okay. You know what I noticed about this Nitro show? It is also three hours long. Vinny, you no longer watch Raw. But the modern Raw feels way longer than these three-hour Nitros. That's true. I have no idea why. I guess because there's so many things that happen on Nitro. In Nitro, they will say, hey, let's do a 12-minute match. Well, not only that, but also... ICP is here. Lash LaRue. There are new Norman thi- Smiley. There are new things every week. New yeah. Faces. yeah. The return of public enemy. Miss Mona and Little Genie. I mean, like, there's so much weird shit on this show. And so many different people that can come in and keep it somewhat interesting, even if it sucks. The funny thing, too, is on Modern Raw, you do get those 12-minute matches, and for some reason, they just... It's the same know. one every week. It's the same it's one. It's the exact every- same people doing the exact same style of matches. And, they've, and, and they have trained you to know that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who wins. The result of this match is irrelevant. So there's no reason you should care about the match itself. Who wrestles like Public Enemy nowadays? Who wrestles well, like I, ICP? I, 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 who wrestles like Saturn? Who wrestles like Benoit? Oh, Everyone nobody. I just mentioned wrestles completely differently. Who wrestles like Canyon? Nobody. Nobody. You can he run right. down the goddamn Raw roster. They all wrestle like each other. They are cookie cutters. Yes. There's nobody on that show. The only two people that, that are different on that show are are uh, Brock Lesnar, who's never there. Sure. And Ronda Rousey, who's been there for... She's done one match on the show. Eight months, and she's had one match on Raw. Yeah. Everybody else, exactly the same. Even Strowman, who is a little different... Is exactly the is same. Is exactly the same. So, Monday Night Show number 203, also August 9th, 1999. Shivani's back. Tony Shivani is back, no explanation. They literally brought oh, they, Scott they, Hudson they, in just to have Rick Steiner beat right. him up. They killed Scott Hudson, that's why he's back. And the, yeah. and the kid from the Wonder Years must have got lost. <laughs> Good. <laughs> God. This opener. Norman Smiley, Prince Iakea, and Lash LaRue versus Vampiro and the Insane Clown Posse. You better not bury this, Vinny. No. <laughs> you kidding me? I had a really <laughs> awful failed pro wrestling career. About 120 matches, maybe a dozen were any good. I had all sorts of humiliation in front of paying crowds in between the ropes. Mm. I don't think anything that happened to me in a ring was as embarrassing as what I watched Prince Ayakia do in this match. Oh, well, I mean, that's fine. Prince! I thought I to bury the clown. I want... No! In fact, as, as I shared via Twitter... That's true. The two best wrestlers in the six-man tag... In this particular match, were Violent J and Shaggy too dope. <laughs> I'll give you Violent J. I'm not sure about Shaggy. I actually watched because because Shaggy has a history of not being as good as J. But Shaggy here was certainly, if nothing else, tied for second. He did, sure, he didn't. Violent J was actually good. J did nothing, or uh, Shaggy did nothing to embarrass himself. So Lash Larue and Vampiro start. I had to watch this like ten times, <laughs> trying to make sense of what happened here, and yet I never, I never actually did. So Lash Larue and Vampiro start. And they wrestle for 20 seconds. And suddenly, Ayakea climbs to the top rope and falls into the ring. That happened. And Shivani's like, oh, there must have been a tag there. And I was like, there must have been a tag there. I let it go for, on the first time. So now Ayakea is in the ring. Lash looks at him. Vampiro looks at him. He kind of goes over to Ayakea. Ayakea throws a kick. It misses. Vampiro goes down. Lash does a body slam. Vampiro gets up. All three guys look at each other. Yes. Time stands still. Ayakea fakes a punch. Lash just starts dancing. Vampiro is just standing there waiting for someone to please hit him so he can go down. And eventually, Lash goes to the corner. He just leaves. And now Ayakea is in the ring. I watched this over and over and over again. I thought at some point I must have missed, like like, like when Lash hit the ropes and, and I carried over and tagged himself in. I had no idea what was going on. No, Lash never came within three steps of his own corner. What the fuck was Prince Ayakea doing? I have no idea. So, this was just death. This- oh, <laughs> I'll give you that. But like... The fans loved this match. They loved the, the, they yeah. loved the clowns. The clowns, Vampiro and Raven, are, are now known as the Deadpool. Yep, and they're they they're it. supposed to be heels, but they're total baby faces. Yes, like yeah, the baby faces fucking sucked. Okay, they were terrible. But Norman Smiley, the people got in his comeback. I don't even know why. Because <laughs> he was doing the big wiggle. Thank you. ICP. Violent J was so good in this. Violent J was so good. <laughs> I'd have a match with Violent J in a fucking heartbeat. He was so good in this match. 
And then there was the big comeback. It was actually, you know, I will say this. Norman Smiley's reaction was more like Roman Reigns. Like, the entire crowd is screaming something. Like, half of them are cheering, half of them are booing, but they're all going crazy. And then Violent J pins Lash LaRue, who deserved to be beaten in this match, with a moonsault. Yeah. And hey. A top rope moonsault by Violent J. WCW doing so much better with ICP than WWE did. Well, that's for sure. Yeah. Yes. Overall, I give this a thumbs up. It's funny, they, the ICP and, and Vampire have jerseys on with their names on the back. Mm-hmm. At some point, Tony gets completely lost, and he refers to Violent J as Jack Jekyll. <laughs> he did call him Jack Jekyll. <laughs> because his name was on the back of the jersey. Yes. There was also a point in here during the uh, six-way to end things when they wanted to hit Prince Ikea with a leg drop. So they throw him into the ring, and he rolls to his belly. And Jay goes in there to roll them back to his back, but he rolls back to his belly. Now they're legit fighting as Jay's trying to get, stay on your fucking back and take this goddamn leg drop. I don't know. I don't know if Prince Ayake was on some sort of illicit substance here, mm. but for his sake, I hope so. Because if he did this sober, my God. He's on some of that herb. <sighs> Yeah. The Revolution meets with Dusty Rhodes backstage. Oh, God. So... Dean fucking Malenko does the talking. Dean! (laughs) Dusty, I want to know if there is going to be a change. Will we be getting opportunities? I'm like, you've gotten fucking so many opportunities, and it's been terrible every time you've been in the ring. Who passed away and put Dusty in charge? This is something new that happened, like, on Thunder. The... the, Well, here's the thing. Dusty is now in charge of the championship yes. committee so I, I i let's see here i did it at the end dusty's head of the championship committee piper is commissioner sting is president and eric bischoff and jj dylan are still walking around with some kind of executive titles yeah this sucks bureaucracy there is oh my gosh dusty says you guys are going to get an opportunity but once you get it you're gonna have to prove yourselves this storyline does not age well at all i like when dean says we're not getting any younger and then Dusty calls them the youth of the industry. Yes. Well, Paisley's not getting any younger. I suppose that's technically true. Yeah. So David Flair walks by and runs his mouth, and Benoit puts him in the crossface, and eventually they pull him off, and Dusty books a Benoit-David U.S. title match for tonight. Yeah, I love that Benoit, some assholes being a dick, and so he doesn't punch him, chop him, slap him, puts him in a crossface on the ground. Mm-hmm. Bad idea in a bar fight. <laughs> well, here David had no uh, backup that's true he had, he had Tory Wilson some fine backup by the way. <laughs> public enemy versus Kurt Hennig and Barry Windham they're just back yeah they just came back this week just back. I mean they've been being paid hundreds of thousands of dollars so you may as well Jeez. do something with them this is the debut I believe of the good old boys music yes rap is crap was getting over and so <laughs> they had to get rid of it <laughs> and give them good old boys which is still over Fans are going nuts for this match. Yes. They were going crazy for this match. That's when I knew I must open a promotion in Boise. There was a point in this match when the Idaho fans were chanting, Redneck suck. Yeah. You have been to Idaho? (laughs) You know what they got? I've driven through quickly. Yeah, they got some rednecks. So Johnny Grunge in this match may have been less incompetent than Prince Ikea was in the opener. He threw... Less incompetent or more? More incompetent. Mm. Speaking of incompetence, hey, everyone, it's me. Johnny Guns through a terrible spin kick. He looks totally incapable of running the ropes, and he's in there with Kurt Hennig and Barry Windham. I can only imagine what they were thinking about this. Enemy makes their comeback, and they actually put Barry Windham through a table. Yes. I was stunned. Well, they put him through a table, and then the bell rings. Yes. Because the timing was so awful <laughs> that none of the cameras caught anything that happened. No. The announcers at ringside didn't see it. They can't explain it. They're like, Kurt Hennig pinned Johnny Grunge. Yes. I can confirm that. And the announcers go, and Grunge was getting in and caught in the ropes. <laughs> I There is a redneck fleeing. Yes. So, like, somebody I, hit him with something. I suspect somebody used a bull rope or a cowbell yes. or something. But yes. I, I can't really tell. Yes, no. it was a cowbell. I describe this as an unholy mess. Yeah, but it was, it was hot. It was super hot. And Hennig is loving this like nothing else. That is true. He's having the time yes. of his life. I also loved, he gets in the ring at the beginning of the match, he does a little dance, he goes to get on the middle rope, and he, whoa, he has to grab the rope again. Mm-hmm. And then he celebrates. He didn't give a shit. <laughs> Happy as a clam. 
Little Genie versus Mona in a match that actually happened on Nitro. Yeah, so Little Genie apparently had wrestled Mona on Thunder or something. Or no, the other girl that ran in. Brandy later. Alexander. Yeah. I can only presume that Little Genie was one of Miss Mona's trainees. All right. Because Miss Mona had a school, mm -hmm. and she was helping teach, I guess, uh, George how to wrestle okay. for that <laughs> match with Charles Robinson. Right. So I presume that she had a school because Little Genie has like eight matches that we have records for. Yes. Every single one of them against Miss Mona. Okay, well, there you go. No other opponents. Yeah. So, yes, they, they probably practiced this match a thousand times. It's totally fine. It was... <laughs> Dude, the wrestling they did in this match, Jesse Ventura would have loved this. Yes. After watching Prince Ikea and Johnny Grunge, this is like Nick Bockwinkle and Vern Gagne. So they had a perfectly fine TV match. Mona finishes her off with a handspring elbow, a bulldog, and then an Indian deathlock into a cradle. And, well, I, I, I now know, but I have, I have at the time, I had no idea where Jeannie came from or whatever happened to her, but she looked totally fine out here. So it's, it's kind of weird, honestly. She never did anything else. Well, because... She was her student, and they probably practiced this match yeah. 9,000 times move for move. Yeah. So every time they wrestled, they probably did this exact same match. I see. So Brandy Alexander, as noted, runs out to attack Mona. She gets her ass kicked and, she, kicked and she bails. And this was, this is like watching another promotions match in the middle of Nitro. Yes. Because like a whole division that we haven't heard of or seen. Before. We were suddenly sure. watching the AWA. Yeah. This match presented by Vern Gagne. It may have been. It was fun. I liked it. It was fun. Hey. Oh, my God. Hogan. <laughs> so. I must describe this, okay? Okay. If you're not aware, by the way, video.f4wonline.com, we try not to do stuff only for video, but, like, there's no other way to describe this. Hogan's going to be coming down to the ring for an interview. So, for some reason, they've never done this before, they start filming Hogan backstage. And so Hogan starts, he starts walking through the little backstage deal, and he's about to come out on the ramp. And suddenly, right before he comes out on the ramp, he stops and he starts doing this hilariously comical calisthenic workout. He's doing Hindus. He's, no, wasn't he? Maybe it was Hindus, but he's like going, Ugh. Ugh. he's like going like this, this weird fucking thing. And all of a sudden, you just see this fist go, bam! Fucking hit him right in the head and he falls down. Out comes... Sid, Steiner, and Nash. I watched this so many <laughs> times. Between Hogan's warm-up, he has to warm up before he comes out on the ramp. Sure. This fucking fist coming out of nowhere. It looked like it hit him right in the face. Hogan taking this big-ass bump, and then these three monsters coming out. This was great. You're, you're ignoring entirely the first part of this, yes. which is the camera cuts backstage... There's a hallway. You hear some producer or somebody saying, Hogan, you're up. And suddenly there's young Nick. That's right. And Nick Hogan goes into his father's dressing room where before his Hindus, Hogan's doing push-ups. And Nick says, Dad, I, I packed these for you. And he pulls out the red and yellow gear. Oh. And Hogan looks at it and he pauses. But then there's that, that producer, Hulk, we gotta go. He tells Nick, just hang on to this. And he gives Nick the gear, and Nick is so sad, and he hangs his head. <laughs> he wanted to see his daddy in the old gear right now. Did you notice he didn't call his son brother? He did not call his son brother. Then Hogan, because he's late, you see, had to go running down the hallway. Who were we just talking about the other show when they said you can't run at all? Kane. I said he Kane. lumbered. Kane is... He actually could run. Much more better runner than Hogan at this point. Yes. I felt so bad for Hulkster. And then everything else happened, like you said. The, 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 the heels were hiding the other side of the curtain. And once he got within striking range, they pounced. They beat him up. I punched myself so hard in the headphones, by the way. I just want everyone <laughs> to know. <laughs> they beat him up. They drag him down to the ring. Stan and Goldberg make the save. Like, they run down. They chase the bad guys away. And then suddenly, Hogan fires up. <laughs> he jumps up. He tears off his shirt. He's firing up the crowd. He gets a promo saying this business is his life, and he vows to retire if Kevin Nash beats him to Sturgis. He challenges them to a six-man tonight. Nash quickly accepts. Sting says, hey, if we win the six-man tonight, then you, Kevin Nash, should also put your career on the line of Sturgis. Goldberg says, Steiner, you got nothing to put on the line, so you should put your ass on the line. That was a good line. It's Goldberg, everyone. 
So Nash vows Saturday night will be the end of his career. He says he has been waiting to finish off Hogan for three years. No. <laughs> You've been friends with him for three years. You laid down for him seven months ago. Last month, you helped him win the title. You've been doing jack shit to get him out of this business for three years. Don't lie to me. That's all been a plot. I fucking hate this story. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of bad stories. In Not like me. this, dude. This this alleged long simmering hatred between Hogan and Nash when they've been best pals for the vast majority of that time. Anyway, everyone runs their mouths for a while. No one adds anything new. <laughs> David Flair versus Chris Benoit. So David comes out with the lovely Tori Wilson. Oh, was she ever? She was so lovely. And she is wearing this halter top that's cut down to here, and there's her breasts are hanging hanging out everywhere. And Bobby Heenan says, Wow, what a beautiful hat. Yeah. Then she turns around, she's got a skirt that's basically a belt. Yeah. And she yeah. starts walking up the steps and he goes, Look at the back of that hat. <laughs> He's awesome. He's amazing. So Nick Patrick runs out and he ejects Charles Robinson because Ric Flair is no longer in charge. David no longer gets his own personal ref. <laughs> So Charles Robinson leaves. We have been very, very harsh on David Flair. Really, every time he's ever been on TV. Mm -hmm. He packed more charisma into the ensuing three minutes than he has shown in his first Dude, two decades of life. Let me tell you something. This was the first time that I watched David Flair. And I thought, okay. It's going to be a while. <laughs> he needs to get off national television. Sure. He needs to like go to Japan, work some other promotions. But like... He fucking could really be something in this business. This is the first time I ever thought that. His reaction to everything that happened in the first couple of minutes of this match, it was so good. And then the match started, and he had to wrestle. It sucked. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, even then, this was not as good as last week. No, but it was still very enjoyable. It sure was. I don't know why I don't remember this more. I certainly remember last week's match. Last one was longer. Yeah, but like this one actually had a finish, which is funny. They're doing this match, and David tries to flee the revolution or whatever, throws him back in the ring. Fans are chanting pussy at this guy. Benoit's beating his ass. Suddenly, they cut to the ramp, and Canyon is running to the ring. <laughs> what was he doing? He was running to the ring. Apparently, I don't know if he was late, because he was... They, they kind of had to wait for him to not break up the pin, but he's running and running and running. He it's is sprinting to the ring. <laughs> Revolution goes to stop him. Yes. Chris Benoit goes up top. He hits the diving headbutt. The ref counts one. The ref counts two. Benoit lifts David up. The ref counts three. Is that what happened? Then DDP breaks it up. Aha. Uh -huh. I was like, what the fuck just happened right there? And, of course, who's the fucking referee? Nick Patrick. Mm -hmm. The most incompetent res referee in the history of this business. I think that DDP was supposed to break up the pin, but he was too late. Mm -hmm. Benoit tried to lift David up so that they could do whatever finish they were going to do. Nick Patrick is just a fucking idiot, so he just counted anyway. And so, that was the end of the match. Benoit's US champion now. I presume that whatever they were going to do, Benoit was still going to end up the champion. Because they did all of the build for the championship match at Sturgis, like, mm -hmm. immediately afterwards. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm virtually positive this wasn't the finish. That's entirely possible. Have we mentioned the point in here where Benoit chopped David and David sold this like a marionette whose strings had just been cut? That's how he sells all his chops. <laughs> did it last week, this too. This one was spectacular. Both, both arms and one leg go high in the air and he just, just folds. Yeah, he sucked. No, it was but awesome. But he had some charisma. <laughs> it was tremendous. So yeah, Benoit's the U.S. champion, and he's facing DDP for the title at Sturgis. Yes, he cut a promo. He said, Paige, if you want this belt, come get it. No DQ in Sturgis. I'll kick your ass. He did say, I'll there's kick no your way, ass. There's no way he improvised that promo because he accidentally won the title. Right. Like, he had to have, the, the, he had to have ended up with the belt. Remember when we started and talked about how cool it was in here? Yeah. It's not now. No. Randy Savage came out for a promo. He says, Gorgeous George is not there. He will bring her back after he beats Dennis Rodman at Sturgis. He then unveils his hit list. Kevin Nash. Sid Vicious, who has been holding hands with Kevin Nash. Hollywood Hogan. And finally, Dennis Rodman. He says, Rodman has put his hands on Gorgeous George. And now, quote, you will die. Yeah. He says this. And then Gene pulls back the microphone and says, 
Well, you're being politically correct here. No, he said, I don't know if you're trying to be politically correct. <laughs> He's just threatened he murder. Threatened kill this man. <laughs> you will die, were his words. Okay, so you're skipping a few things here, Vinny. When Randy Savage first comes out, Randy Savage has got a surprise. Gene says, what's the surprise? Savage says, first I've got a hit list. Kevin Nash, Sid Vicious, Hollywood Hogan, and Dennis Rodman. I'm the baddest dude on the planet. Rodman put his hands on George. Now he's going to die. Gene makes his comment and then says, what's the surprise? Savage says, the surprise is that Dennis Rodman's reputation compared to mine is crap. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's what I missed. <laughs> Gene asked three fucking times what the surprise was. And the payoff was that Dennis Rodman's reputation compared to Macho Man's is crap. That was the big surprise. That was the big surprise. And that's literally the end of the interview. Yeah. I'm not surprised at that at all. It was a rib on you 19 years ago. <sighs> I'm just sitting there waiting for the surprise. <laughs> what could it be? Dave Taylor and Chris Adams versus Rey Mysterio Jr. and Eddie Guerrero. This was the point where I determined they should never leave Idaho. Yeah, but what was up with Rey and Adams? They were botching stuff left not, and right. It was not a very good match. No. But the crowd loved it anyway, which is why I determined... Ballistic. Yeah. <laughs> if, if they will cheer for a match this sloppy, never go away. I love that they're chanting USA, USA at uh, Taylor and Adams. Well, Rey's from San Diego. Sure. Eddie's from El Paso. Uh, yeah, but still. <laughs> they're not marketed that way, but it's true. So, yes. Uh, the, well, the other guys definitely aren't from the USA. The, the other guys are waving a foreign flag. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, for 30 seconds or so, Dave Taylor and Eddie Guerrero were awesome, and then it quickly fell apart. Mm -hmm. And guys were lost. Guys were out of position. None of it mattered. The crowd went apeshit for everything. Even the even the finish. The finish is Ray will do a top row brana on Adams, and Eddie with the frog splash. Adams ends up very, very, very far away. And then he looks out yonder at this Englishman <laughs> far away. And he's like, oh, fuck. And he jumped as far as he could to get this guy. And he, I, I guess he got there and didn't kill anyone. He literally jumped across the pond. He did. And he pinned him. So the crowd loved that. A total home run here, as sloppy as it was. Vampiro and the clowns run out and attack Ray and Eddie. And then Kidman makes the save. Yep. Crowd was hot. They sure were. Segment was hot. Kidman versus Disco Inferno. Disco Inferno. Four days. Nothing from Disco Inferno. Oh, is your cha hmm. challenge to be his I'm partner? I'm being completely be ignored. Yeah. He's shunning you. I think Dude. I, I literally think I have his phone number. Really? Yeah. We'll talk. Okay. Please tell me it's like 1-800. If I call that show. number and no one answers. Yeah, Ryan Cumberland said he used to talk to Disco on the phone all the time. What? Ryan from Cumberland can contact Disco Inferno and I can't. I don't know what to tell you. So there was a point earlier in this match. I believe this is the, the exact moment, or the, the, this spot, Kidman tweeted this out recently. But the heat is Disco grabs Kidman and throws him over the top ropes, and Kidman goes flying out of the ring and hits the floor and explodes. And I believe it was this exact moment that Kidman, somebody else retweeted it, like History of Wrestling or whatever. And Kidman retweets it and says, for some reason, when I was young, I actually enjoyed doing stuff like this. And he said, I don't know what was wrong with me. So, yeah. Now, they were actually doing a hell of a job as, as Kim and he, as I noted, he exploded here. And he went from virtually dead to hanging by a thread to fighting for his life to trading water to actually making a comeback. It was all very, very good build. And he goes up for the shooting star press and the Deadpool run out and attack for the DQ. Oh, another bullshit finish. Yes. Announcers spent a lot of this match discussing how handsome Disco Inferno was. Very handsome man, says Bobby. Tony says, I guess he's handsome in his own way. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I guess he's handsome in his own way? Maybe I need to put over how handsome he is and he'll get back to me. Because you try. He's a very handsome man. Hey, you know what? He looks great for his age. Mm. Am I wrong? No, he's in great shape. Yeah, right? handsome man. That's right. Very muscular, good hair, <laughs> strong chin, powerful nose. You, sh you should hope so. Yes. So they're beating up Kidman. Disco tries to actually save, but they beat him up too. 
And then Eddie and Ray run out to clean house. Then it was just bizarre. It, was it sure was. What got into Ray this night? Well, they, they clear the ring, and then Disco extends his hand. Offers a handshake. I want a handshake. So they look at his hand. Raise a hug. And Kidman raises his hand for the high five. Ray jumps up to hug him, and then Disco's like, nah, I'm out of here. He was walked like, away. He, he was willing to shake hands, but he's not a hugger. He doesn't want to hug Ray. And he was, Kidman went to I five him. I, I, he didn't want to do that either. I didn't even notice that part. I just noticed Ray. Yeah, it was weird. I thought Ray was tackling him. Yes. It was somebody's wires got seriously crossed here. There was a somewhere in here also, by the way, they started talking he started talking about, you know, I've been around Hulk Hogan a long time. I don't think he's ever put his career on the line before. <laughs> there have been dozens of times, everyone, when Hulk Hogan has put his career on the line. Sometimes I'm pretty sure for house shows. <laughs> Buff Bagwell versus Scott Norton. Vicious and delicious explodes. Yes. Oh, so sad. Apparently, I'm the only one who noticed. The wrestlers didn't acknowledge each other. The announcer said nothing. No, oh, God, I didn't even notice. Yeah. So they wrestled a few I was minutes. I pissed off. At the, what, the match? I just knew that chat was going to come out. It just <laughs> never, ever ends. Cat comes out in his red dancing shoes. Sonny Ono, I guess for Road Wild, has a leather jacket and hat. Yeah, biker. <sighs> Yeah. So Buff's comeback is hip tosses. Like he's been in wrestling school for a week. Cat pulls the ref out of the ring. Sonny hits Buff with a briefcase. Buff still kicks out. Now Cat and Sonny are both in the ring, and Norton Lariat's Cat and Buff Blockbuster Sonny. The ref calls to the bell, and then it is determined that Buff wins via DQ. That's bullshit. This is not Norton's fault. And in fact, they were in his way too. I didn't pay any attention to this. I wrote, this was fucking wretched. Worst thing on the show by far. No idea what the point of any of this was. Am I, am I mistaken? No. I don't know. The Nitro girls and their pointy nipples danced. Okay. Booker T versus Canyon. Clearly it's colder in there than it is in here. It must have been. I'm telling you. I'm going to solve that problem. Ah, hear that? Air just turned on. Go ahead. Hmm. So Harlem Heat crazy over in Boise. Uh, Bigelow and Page left. Stevie Ray stayed at ringside, which should have been a sign, actually. He was openly interfering, throwing Kenyon back in the ring and stuff. So, match is an extended squash. Booker takes 90% of it. Then the ref gets bumped. A triad return. They lay out Stevie Ray, and Kenyon hits Booker with a belt and follows with a flatliner for the win. Made sense leading into the pay-per-view. Yeah, it was fine. Title match is already signed. Mean Gene brings Dennis Robin out for Oh, the allow me. <laughs> My favorite thing on this show of late. Keep in mind, we've already seen this match. Yes. Gene brings out Dennis Rodman, who's 15 feet tall, <laughs> dressed in a trench coat, stuff in his face. Everything's pierced. He's got this big-ass hat on. Tackle box exploded into his face. So, the first thing I notice is Gene's holding the mic. Yeah. After last week. Mm -hmm. Dennis Rodman mumbles that he loves Idaho. He says the reason George is in her lock and key is because all the ladies, including George, come after him. Fans begin to boo. Dennis says, Gene, give me that mic. He snatches. Uh, up, to the, up to this point, because Gene's holding the mic here, and Robin's talking, and sometimes he'll turn over here and talk, and yes. sometimes he'll come back here, and sometimes he'll go here and talk, and he figured it out himself and took no, the mic No, no, no. That's not why. He grabbed the mic because he wanted to grab the mic and mm -hmm. not have Gene pull it away when he cut his promo. Ha. He says, what I get done with, uh, <laughs> macho asshole. But he came out with, he referred to him as rando, rando, whatever his name is, macho man asshole. Yes. I'm going to beat his ass. I'm going to take George all up and down Sturgis and prove why she's my bitch. <laughs> Tony goes, you better get that mic back, Gene. <laughs> Gene gets the mic back from him. Randy Savage storms out. He's furious. This guy's called him an asshole on live TV. He's called this woman a bitch. He's all pissed off. They have the geeks come out to separate him. I'm like, I want to see it again. I just watched it. <laughs> it wasn't this that good. This shit's so good. Rodman with a live mic and Savage with a live mic. It's just, it's magic. They're too... Totally crazy, insane fuckers. This is the key. Doing whatever they want. This is the and they're going to get in the ring and do shit together. Can you imagine trying to script a promo for Dennis Rodman? Oh, I'm sure they fucking tried. I'm sure they tried. That's why Gene was there, to lead him through it. 
Rodman just took that goddamn thing away from him and just went into business for himself. I loved it. You know, Gene has that rule where you never give up the mic to the wrestler. I don't think he had a choice with yeah. that. No, he just grabbed it and snatched it away from him. Gene, give me that. And then as this chaos is ensuing and they're trying to st- stop hell from breaking loose, Tony's like, hey, be sure to watch Dennis Rodman on The Tonight Show. I loved this. <laughs> God, I loved it. Kevin Nash. And, oh, by the way, why did Dennis Rodman come out to the NWO theme? Fuck if I Was know. it a network I, editing issue? I, I think he used to come out to the Voodoo Child. I see. Yeah. But so did Hogan, so yeah. I... Well, I speaking know. of music, main event, Kevin Nash, Sid Vicious, and Rick Steiner versus Hulk Hogan, Goldberg, and Sting. I mean, do we know that Hogan and Rodman are not friends now? I have no idea. No. They've, they've never crossed paths I have no since idea. he's been back. Yeah. Goldberg, though, still has the Megadeth music, and that yes. is on the network. Hey, we missed that Chad Brock concert. Shucks. They edited that off, yeah. Thank God. Hogan comes out, and he's got the red and yellow on, and American Maid is playing. Dude, when they hit that fucking music, and he came out in this outfit, the hard cam is shaking. (laughs) That's how crazy... I haven't seen the hard cam shake since, like, the the peak of Stone Cold Steve Austin in, like, 98 with Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. It's the last time I can remember the hard cam shaking. This fucking guy comes out dressed like it's 1986. The hard cam is shaking. These fans are going absolutely crazy. He's tan. He's jacked. He's got the red and yellow on. He looks great. I had goosebumps. He had pictures, uh, or uh, they had fans with signs, bring back the red and yellow. The fans were very happy, obviously. Everyone's just going ape shit. A single and team. you know what's even better? The fans are going crazy, and all of this insane energy for the return of the red and yellow Hulk Hogan it transferred into the goddamn wrestling ring absolutely this crazy fucker Rick Steiner is bumping all over the place he's flying around in the air Sid's taking these giant bumps Nash is taking these giant bumps for, for two or three minutes the Hulkster ran wild and all the heels by himself he punched them all he kept bonking their heads together they kept fl- they kept uh, falling down and the place is just louder and louder and louder. And finally, they realize, what are we working so hard for? And everything just stops, and the cheering just continues. Yeah. And the, the, the heels are angry and pouting of their hands and their hips, and Hogan's pumping up the crowd. The place is just louder and louder and louder. Nothing's happening, but everyone's having the time of their lives. Hulk Hogan gets to be a superhero for the first time in three years. He's If you thought Hulk uh, Hennig was happy as a cowboy... Ah, oh. Hogan as the Hulksters is nothing else. So they do a little bit more stuff. Finally, he tags out, but now he's still the ultimate cheerleader. And it's still all about him. And it should be. It's not a knock on him. Sting goes for a top rope splash. Sid gets the knees up. They get a little bit of heat on him. I'm not sure what they had planned. A turnbuckle got exposed. Nash went to snake eyes Sting into it. The ref gets in the way. Time freezes for a while. And finally, Sting just grab or uh, yeah, Sting grabs Nash and just throws him into the ref. A chair gets in the ring. Everyone gets hit with it. Sting puts Nash in the Scorpion, and another ref runs down and calls for the bell. Yeah. <laughs> so Nash, Nash was unconscious. Nash loses the go home show, and then a spoiler loses a Sturgis and retires. That's right. Never wrestled again. Yeah, that was the last time I ever saw him in the ring, if I recall correctly. So this is a very fun show. I did think it felt pretty long. I'm oh give, no, no, no. I'm gonna give Nash a little watch bit. Raw. No, nope. back to me. I refuse. I'm gonna give Nash a little bit of credit here. Uh, instead of being the cool heel and being a cocky a-hole, he was actually a bumbling fool, and that's when the heels are the best. Yes, absolutely. Dude, he wasn't getting over as a cool heel with Hogan out there in the red and yellow. Hogan was so ridiculously over. And then, do you remember the reaction they got for that fucking terrible match? It, it, Sturgis? It, it, it was not like this. Oh, my God. Those bikers. You'd yeah. think, you'd think that maybe going to Sturgis for free and running a pay-per-view in front of a bunch of bikers outside might be a bad idea they did it year after year after year after year idiots yeah this is a great show i love both of these shows the, be- the best pair of shows in a long long yeah long. this felt like the monday night wars were in full effect and they were awesome does anyone have music to play i sure do video i was waiting mm. i got it right here so the finishes on this show were clean pin in a six-man tag, pin of some sort in a tag match, clean pin in a women's match, clean pin for the U.S. title, clean pin in a tag match, D 
DQ due to Juggalos, DQ due to Interference, Pin after Belt Shot, and Submission after Shenanigans in the main event. You know, there's a website called The Black Vault. It's got a bunch of government documents that have been released through the Freedom of Information Act. And I was up there, and just for the hell of it, I typed in, like, WWE. Like, what if there's any wrestling documents or whatever? I typed in WWE or wrestling or whatever into the search function. First thing that came up was Juggalos. <laughs> FBI investigating the Juggalos. Mm, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Man, so those Juggalos run in, Vinny. That's serious business. That's a fair That's point. That's the thing. Yes. We are at war! All right. Let's talk Ni- about Nitro now. Nitro number 204 also. Oh. Wonderful. August 16th, 1999. Okay, a couple things here before we get started. Mm-hmm. David was not supposed to lose the title last week. Oh, really? We talked about it. It looked weird. So what happened was, Flair hates WCW again. He thinks it's stupid. It sucks. He don't want to be there. Rick? Yes. Okay. So he's he's got a back injury. Mm. So he can't wrestle. Mm-hmm. So gotcha. he's just staying home. For those of you not watching online, Brian did the air quote. Yeah, but I mean, he may have a back injury, but it's Ric Flair. He's had a back injury since the plane crash. Yes, he yeah. broke his back in an airplane. He's That's been fair. wrestling ever since. So anyway, he's just not going to work. They're angry. Last week, they were going to give David Flair Ming as his new bodyguard. And that's oh. how he would retain his titles. Or his mm-hmm. title every time he wrestled. Makes sense. They got pissed off at Rick. And so they decided to take the title off David. I don't know when they made this call. It could have been during the match. Like, they could have, from the back, told the ref, you know, to count the pin. Benoit clearly didn't know. Because he tried to lift the guy up when David didn't kick out. So actually, it's possible that everyone knew but Benoit. Yes, actually. Which, if you watch this show, anything is fucking possible. Yeah. They taped a David title defense for Thursday's Thunder after Nitro. Oh, no. They had to edit it off the show because they changed their mind. <laughs> they just took the title <laughs> off the guy. So anyway, that's the story. <laughs> they were These taping, dipshits. <laughs> they were taping Thunder before Nitro? Well, it was just, I don't know when they taped it. Or maybe they taped two weeks the prior week or oh, something. Oh, okay, okay. But anyway. So the other thing I got to mention is this was the day after Road Wild. Two days. We yeah. watched those right. shows. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, they recap at the beginning of the show some notes from Road Wild. Mm-hmm. Because we watched it, this made complete and total sense. This is like the first time that we've actually watched the pay-per-view. <laughs> yes. And I, it really struck me, these people don't get it. They they write their show with the assumption that everybody watched the pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah, sure. They can see how many people are watching the fucking TV show. And they can see how many people are buying the pay-per-views. It should be abundantly clear, not everybody is watching the pay-per-views. Why don't they do a better job explaining what happens at the pay-per-view? If we hadn't watched the pay-per-view, I'd be fucking clueless oh, watching dude, the show. Oh, dude, we have no clue. None. So they did, in fact, recap Hogan returning to Red and Yellow, retiring Kevin Nash and Sturgis. They said, Sid, in two months back from the company, is already up to 55-0. and 0. Oh, excuse me. Hold on a second. <laughs> let's, let's start right away, man. Let's get into this. They opened this show explaining that Sid has returned to the company, and he is 55-0 and zero since returning. In two months. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's now, had five days off in two months. Now, granted, okay, there are house shows, all right? Even if we pretend that every time he lost an house show... They pretended that he won. Mm -hmm. Sure. On this very fucking show, Nitro. He lost last week. It was a tag match. On this show. It was a tag match. He lost two weeks ago on this very show. He loses at every house show. I'm not even sure he has one. He beat Sting. That's why he beat Sting. It is kind of amazing. They decided that he's now undefeated 55-0. and And you know what? One other thing. It's one thing if you're a heel and you come on TV after losing last week and you say, I am 55 and zero. And then you start powerbombing shitheads and counting that as a win. Fine, you're Psycho Sid, you're a delusional heel. That ain't what's happening. Yeah. The announcers are telling us that he's 55 and zero. Yeah. The announcers with credibility are telling us that he hasn't been defeated on shows they're fucking calling his losses on. This was so fucking hilarious. And it only got funnier. <laughs> oh, it did. It did. Now, 
quickly before we move on here, Brian and I reviewed the Sturgis show and we talked about Sid chokeslam Sting and pinned him. Yes. It didn't really occur to me until later how weird that is. Like, how many clean jobs does Sting do ever? Considering he came up at an era when the baby faces never did clean jobs for the heels. And that was true for most of the Monday Night Wars. Like, I'm sure Vader probably beat him once or twice. I think he did a job for Goldberg here a few months back. Sid, St- Sid pinned him. Probably did a few jobs. DDP. In- Page, okay, Page might... Clean? I don't know about clean. He, I mean, he did a lot of jobs for interference. Maybe DDP belt clean, shots, whatever. But, yeah. But yeah. Point is, it's really weird seeing somebody hit Sting with a move and pin him. Yes. That was very bizarre. And you know what? Like I said, they were going to give Sid a title match on this show, so that finish made sense. Mm-hmm. However, next week, it's Hogan versus Sting. Yeah. So couldn't Sid have beaten somebody else? I don't know. Lash the room versus Juventud Guerrera. A minute in, Sid comes out and attacks both men for the DQ. Cuts a promo saying that in the year 2000, his name will be heard the loudest. What? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Well. In the year 2000, he says. It's 1999, by the way. Mm. The name Sid Vicious will be heard the loudest. Yeah. Well, when you're running... Said the loudest? Said the loudest. Yeah, no, he said heard. When you're running down you know, a list of names, there's Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair. Sid! And... <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah. Says he will make Goldberg obsolete and threatened to do this all night. Yeah. I did not take this threat seriously enough. I concede. I, I should have taken Sid more seriously. He said in 2000. He doesn't even know the year. In 2000, he says, I will accumulate more wins than anyone in the history of professional well, wrestling. He meant to be undefeated through the next 18 months. Well, at the rate he's going, he'll have that accumulation by next month. Yes. Steve Rigo versus Scotty Riggs. They went a minute and Sid ran in for the DQ. Yes. And here I wrote, this is going to be an all-time terrible show. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, they did not just do this for three hours. This, by the way, was supposed to be Steve Regal versus Conan. But Conan bitched. Good. So they put in Scotty Riggs. That works. Neither of them deserved this. So Sid says the people will not have to go through this because he knows he's doing a terrible, putting on a terrible show here. If Mr. Hogan will give him what he wants... Again, Psycho Sid, the most Mr. polite Hogan. man. Yeah, Mr. Hogan. <laughs> the last years of WCW. He he claimed yes. this right here where he beat up two men counted as another win. Ah. And this all made him so happy. Yes. And, 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 and not like over the top cackling psychopathic Sid. He just got this big goofy Arkansas grin on. Yeah. 56 no now. I guess 57 counting the opener. No, no, no. That four it's men. two. As, as we would later learn, each of these men counts as two. That, he's up to... No, no, up, no, 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 Vinny. He beat up... 59. Or each of these men counts as one. He beat up two men in the opener. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he beat up two men in the second match. So That's be, four men. So 59 and no. Should be 59 right now. Right, right. As stated. Okay. Yeah. Cat versus Mike Enos. Here's another fun story. Okay. At Road Wild, it's supposed to be Ernest Miller versus Bagwell. Didn't that Yeah. Happen? And Ernest Miller is very upset that Bagwell... Put on the blackface. Oh, he imagine that. He didn't like this guy. He didn't like this guy going in. No. So they say, Shat, you're going over. Probably not those exact words. Probably not. Bagwell bitches. Jeez. Shat keeps beating me up on TV. Why do I have to lose here? They say, you're going to lose. So they changed the finish. And I guess, uh, Anyway, I, I can't remember what the, the actual finish ended up being, but they got in a big argument and Chat kicked his ass yeah. at the pay-per-view. Hmm. Backstage fight mm-hmm. over somebody not wanting to do something. So, by the way, we're how many matches in? Three? Two? Three. 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 That's two incidents now where a guy is bitched about a finish. Conan and now Bagwell. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. Oh, so Cat says, I will beat Mike Enos in four minutes or I will leave Colorado Springs and never return. Excuse me, four minutes? That's what he said. Okay. Four minutes or less. He Enos beats him up. He goes after Sonny Ono. Cat kicks him in the head and pins him. Officially, they say, at 339. Yeah, it was 212. Mm. <laughs> they can't tell the truth about anything. <laughs> Everything is a lie. Did you actually time a match for the first time? I got it here! <laughs> Cat was happy. He danced in his red shoes. Berlin hype video. Yes. Okay, now look. <laughs> I know it's 2018, and computer graphics and things have come a long way since 1999. Sure. I guarantee you, this, this at the time, in its own period, would have still looked embarrassingly hokey. 
Well, Vinny, <sighs> let's keep in mind also that there's been a Berlin promo before. Tony Schiavone has recognized him as Alex Wright. Mm. He's now forgotten. I forgot about that. Who is this mysterious man, he says. Yes. And underneath this graphic, it reads, these are the three words <laughs> to determine or to, to describe Berlin, okay? Technical, determined, and victorious. Yeah. They aired this twice with yeah. those three words. <laughs> Did someone just grab a thesaurus? There's a shot of his head from different angles, a spinning in place. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then a close-up as he, well, fingers his cane. Yes. That's what happened. Okay. And, and smiled at the camera. Yeah. So backstage, Sid is beating, beating up Silver King and La Parca. Yeah, he beats up these two Mexicans. <laughs> he power bombs Parca onto a giant bag of popcorn. Yeah. So that's six. That looks so fun. Six guys now. <laughs> six wins now. Okay, so we're at 61. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. He says, maybe now Hogan will give him what he wants. <laughs> Popcorn? Rey Mysterio Jr. versus Laney Lane. I don't want to spoil the things to anyone, but Sid came out at two minutes and killed them both. <laughs> okay, so that's... 63? 63. Yes. Yeah. Funny you should mention that. Bobby Heenan then concludes, Sid <laughs> has beaten up nine men tonight. <laughs> anyone counting, by the way? That's, that's, that's only eight. 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 Oh, Lodi. Lodi was... Anyway. He beat Lodi up here, too. He says he's beaten nine men. Yeah. He is now 59 <laughs> and zero. <laughs> That's some Alvarez math right there. I thought I was bad at math. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, so I they, guess they officially... Can't, they can't even do it wrong right. Yes. <laughs> officially, he's now 59 and zero. <laughs> Each man he beats up is worth half a man. I see. Well, they were cruiser. <laughs> half a win. Did right? I mention we're only a half hour into the show? <laughs> oh, yeah. We've already seen four matches, three of the three DQs via Sid. Oh, wait till the next match. So Sting runs out to make the save. Then Hogan, Sid bails. Hogan and Sid go back and forth a bit. Hogan, <laughs> by the way, well, I'll, I'll conclude and then get back to Hogan. So Hogan says, Sting, you are the reason I retired Kevin Nash. You? He is? I don't know. Be him clean in the middle. I don't with know. With no help. I don't know. You're the reason I'm going to beat Sid, he said. What? I don't, I don't know. This is what he said, all right? Then he said, no one deserves a title shot more than you. I'm going to offer you a title shot next week in Las Vegas. I was so excited to stay an extra day, and I realized, fuck. It's 19 years ago. 19 years ago. <laughs> there is no Nitro. <laughs> Sting, ex- Monday. Sting accepts, and Hogan says, we'll be friends until then, but then I'm going to kick your ass. After I kick Sid's ass, I'm going to kick your ass. This whole promo... He's Lots spread, of ass from Hogan he, here. I, I swear to God, he said ass more in this promo than Mr. Ass and Rock did in their promo on Raw. It's very possible. Hmm. I can only imagine, like, he must have dropped an ass on accident and apologized, but they said, no, you got the green light, brother. And he said, well then. And he ran with it. Like, like Owen Hart. Ass? Yes. <laughs> That's right. I remember that now. Here we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the show turns every corner of the world at this exact moment. <laughs> Insane Clown Posse versus Public Enemy. What a match. I was giddy. You I cannot are. wait for this. I still am, actually. Mm. Am I the only one who thought Violent J was the best worker in this match? It no. was close. I, I think Rocco Rock was a little better. Yeah. I, I, I ranked them at the end. I went Rocco, J, Shaggy, and then by a big drop off, Johnny Grunge. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, for <laughs> by sure. By far. Yeah. Did you know, by the way, we talked about this a little bit, but Violent J and Shaggy. They started as wrestlers. Yeah. That's how long they'd been wrestling. Yes. They were wrestlers, Mm -hmm. and then they they were just done with wrestling because of all the bullshit. That's right. And that's when they got into music. Yes. So it's not like they were musicians who thought that once they were rich, it would be fun to wrestle. Even after they put out an album, they weren't musicians. (laughs) Oh, Craig. Get out of here. Clearly, you've not heard- Were we just talking about this at the beginning of the show, that all music is great? No, no. That's not what I said. (laughs) I'm a big fan of these clowns. Craig clearly is not familiar with Please Don't Hate Me. No. A great song. So. <laughs> or Fuck the World. Or Fuck yeah. the World. I'm watching this match in, in, my attention is focused, laser focused on this. I must track everything. It's every bit as fun and terrible at the same time as you would think. They're just out, uh, four guys out there in hockey shirts. Six if you count Vampiro and Raven. <laughs> the crowd loves the clowns, but they're still heels. They put uh, Shaggy. They put Shaggy through two tables. Then the ref got bumped. 
Vampiro wipes out Grunge with a flying kick and the Mitchie Nuka driver. And he puts Violent J on top for the win. This was the pro wrestling equivalent of like junk food or hostess products. Okay. Where you know it's terrible. Okay. Factually, you can't argue. This is awful. Yeah, but it tastes good. It tastes so good. <laughs> it's it so great. much fun. I love this match. <laughs> this was awesome. That is a great analogy. Thank yes. you. I was happy with that one. And no Sid. And there was no Sid involved. They just yeah. did a match. This is so awesome. Harlem Heat are the new tag team champions. Yeah. They come out. They brag about their win. They promise to take on all comers. And that's that. Yes. Did not waste my time. They established the new champions. They wasted your time later. Fair oh, enough. <laughs> but, uh, then they showed some still shots of the championship win against the Jersey Triad from Sturgis. The exact same Berlin hype video aired. I believe you noted, Brian, that he is technical, determined, and victorious. Yes, yeah. I did. Did you mention it was scribbled on the screen like the, the WWF logo? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At this point, uh, <laughs> the sad, sad remnants of the New World Order came out. This was once the most powerful, influential group in all of pro wrestling. Yep. Here is the roster at this exact point in time. Mm -hmm. Scott Norton, Horace Hogan, Vincent, and Brian Adams. Dude, at least they still got Norton. Do still have Norton. And they got rid of some dead weight here. I suppose. <laughs> Listen. Sure. I don't know why, but they started beating up Brian Adams. No, I'll tell you why. You don't know why? There was one great thing about this segment. Okay. Horace talks first. He sucks. <laughs> Scott Norton then grabs the mic. He's cutting this angry promo. Mm -hmm. He starts by saying, Listen, Stevie, no one leaves our fucking gang. If you come crawling back, maybe... We'll give you your spot back. That he thinks about and says, nah, probably not. Okay, I, mi I missed the nah, probably not. It doesn't matter. Right. He's in the middle of a speech. He never speaks, by the way. He's in the middle of a passionate speech, and Brian Adams snatches the mic away from him. Okay. Just pulls it right out of his hand. Okay. Brian Adams starts cutting a promo, and in the background, you just see Scott Norton just look at this guy like, did you just fucking take that mic out of my hand? You dumb motherfucker. I'm thinking the same thing. Okay. I'm thinking, if this is real, <laughs> if this is real, sure. Scott Norton is going to beat the shit out of Brian Adams. And Brian Adams is happily talking away on the mic, I, and I, Stevie can take no more, and he fucking jumps him. I did notice Norton kept like trying to grab him and get the mic back. Yes, because he him snatched it out of his hand like an idiot. Just a, of, of all the things the NWO has been through, I thought stealing a microphone during a promo was low on the list of reasons to beat somebody. Have you watched this crew, Vinny? <laughs> Clearly, Brian Adams had been on thin ice for a while. That's fair. He was fucking terrible. <laughs> well, he I stepped mean, over the line well, <laughs> one too many times, and Norton was like, you're dead. And he fucking killed and him. They all beat him up. So now there's three men in the NWO. Mm -hmm. Now it's just Norton, Horace, and Vincent. Well, if you take out Brian Adams, those three men are a stronger unit <laughs> than the four of them with Brian Adams. I suppose the... This is an improvement. <laughs> average wrestler in the yes. NWO has gone up, but I don't know. Yes. I still think I'd rather fight four, uh, three guys than four. If Norton could get rid of the other two guys, now we've got a unit. <laughs> <laughs> the New the World of, Uno? Is yes! <laughs> the unit of one? <laughs> The New World One. That's it. Okay. NWO. The New World Only. Only. He's the only one left. Anyway. I'm not wrong about this, Vinny. <laughs> Look at these other two idiots. Vincent oh, I'm not, and you know, Horace. I'm not defending them. We'll talk about that later. I'm not defending them. Mean Gene calls Keenan oh! Gallagher. <laughs> <to Yes. the ring. laughs> yes. This this is Mean Gene's first question. I guess it's a question. Can I try to be Kidman? <laughs> I'll be Gene. Well, okay. You've, you've got his haircut in his face. Get so out of ahead. here. First of all, you are a chick magnet. Well, you know, everybody's got a click backstage. <laughs> you totally should ignore that. We're just a bunch of filthy animals. He's we talking love about to party himself. and chase the chicks. That is what he said. That's what he <laughs> said. We're just a bunch of filthy animals, Gene. Right. We love to party and chase the chicks. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even attempt to do this with a straight face. He said it in such an aw shucks kind of moment. It was way painfully, too. hideously awkward. This man had never chased a chick in his life. No. Oh. So, yeah. Well, he ended up with... Tories. Clearly, Tories, he, so. he, he learned something along the way. Yeah. 
Uh, but yes, yeah, so this he was talking about Ray and Eddie and Conan. They are the filthy animals now, animals now, because that's what Kidman called them. Who wrote this? That's a great question. Who wrote this segment? Not Kidman. Because Kidman is here explaining that all we do, all we do, yes, is we party and we chase chicks. Right. Gene then says. How about that Nitro Girls? How many times he asks, video. have you mm-hmm. watched the Nitro Girls pay-per-view? Yep. Kidman and says. Kidman says, more than you. And Gene says, I've watched it 17 times. 17 times. And Kidman says, I've watched it more than that. So, <laughs> what? So. There's a disconnect here. No. Yes, yes. There is a disconnect. It doesn't make sense that the guy watching the Nitro Girl pay-per-view 18 or more times right. is also out chasing chicks. Yeah. This is impossible. Yes. doesn't make any sense. Gene asks, who is the hottest Nitro Girl? And Kidman says, with all due respect to my friend Dallas Page, I gotta say Kimberly. He's not wrong. How could that be disrespectful? Now, it hey, could. DDP was disrespected. It occurred to me later, because DDP is a heel, he's very insecure. Sure. Yeah, but he's allowing his wife to do a Nitro Girls bikini Mm pay-per-view, and then he gets mad when someone someone says his girl is the hottest of all (laughs) of them? Yes. Hadn't she been in Playboy already, too? Yes. A couple times, I think. So Paige comes out, slaps Kidman, lays him out. (laughs) He demands a ref come out so I can do a match with with this filthy little... I can't even say it. So I can do a match with this filthy little booger, is what he called him. Booger. Yes, a filthy little booger. I laughed. So we get DDP and Kidman. What? Hey, Kimberly bounced down to the ring at this uh, point. At the end. At oh, the I'm end. sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. So they wrestle a few minutes. Kidman turns the diamond cutter into a roll-up for the win. Page is irate. He diamond cuts Kidman. Diamond cuts the ref. He starts laying into Kidman. He's whipping him and choking him with a belt. Out comes Kimberly in an outfit that proves Billy Kidman was right. Yes. Yeah. I approve of this outfit. Yes. And she manages to calm Paige down. This is your friend, she says. She leads him away. Disco Inferno comes out. <laughs> Dude. Disco Inferno comes out. And as soon as he has a mic in his hand, I thought, he's here to accept my challenge <laughs> for this weekend. You have a strange mind sometimes. And then you know what he said? He says, I am a superstar and a sex symbol. Yep. And an icon. A booty-shaking badass. And an icon. Mm-hmm. And then he says, don't call me, I'll call it you. It actually is true. He <laughs> was like, what the fuck? He was talking about the filthy animals in 1999 and not Brian Alvarez in 2018. He may as well have been. <laughs> I'm calling him my Observer Live live on the air tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> I'm not fucking around anymore. I'm going to call him on the air. It's my last chance before I leave. I guess so. Hmm. So he says he's willing to prove he is the top superstar in WCW. And boy, after I watch this match, <laughs> I want this man as my partner. That's this was, fucking match was great. Yeah, out, was comes, awesome. out comes Chris Benoit. He, accepts his, he challenges him to a match and hits the ring and they do the match. And yes, Disco Inferno versus Chris Benoit had a very, very good TV match. I mean, it's Benoit. It's hard, not hard to have a good match, but Disco was also very good here. Disco didn't screw anything up. He looked good in the this went, No, it went beyond not screwing anything up. Disco was very good here. Yeah. There's a point here, in fact, as Benoit begins his comeback late in the match, Heenan says, this is a great match. And Shivani says, this is four stars. Oh, my. Now, that's, just, that's generous. <laughs> it was a little generous. It was three a plus. Little. This is in the three-star range. It's not four stars. But it was a very, very good TV match. And Benoit, I, I listen to the finish. Because there's not every match needs to have 25 near falls and cutoffs. Mm-hmm. Benoit chopped him a bunch. He hit some suplexes. He hit the diving headbutt. And he pinned him. Yeah. The end. Mm-hmm. Great. Great. It was awesome. Just great. An excellent TV match. Barry Windham versus Goldberg. Goldberg. What a great match this, this was. This actually was too. Yeah. This was two in a row. Goldberg is still using the Megadeth music. The match went 30 seconds. Goldberg killed every redneck in Colorado Springs and spin, pinned Windham with a spear and jackhammer. Yep. Place went absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. That's how you That's get a guy over. All they That's want all you have to do. Out of Goldberg. Yeah. They want Come Roman out, Reigns to get over. Kill do this. geeks. Mm hmm. In a handicap match. Oh, my Harlem God. Heat took on the entire NWO. Can I can I talk about this? Crazy, I don't r- want rarely to. Rarely do this, so I yes, know. please. There were two Harlem Heat, and then there was the remnants of the NWO on the other side of the ring. There were six options to start this match. <laughs> I had this same thought. I also did the math. <laughs> 
There were six options to start this match. I'm talking flow chart in my head. Right. I've got an abacus out. Yes. I'm doing long division. And then they pick the two dirt worst guys to put in the ring together, Vincent and Stevie Ray. Not to mention. I'm when, not done. <laughs> can I just mention one thing, though? When they put these two guys in the ring, the announcers explain to us there was a coin flip backstage <laughs> to determine who would start. I want to see that coin. For a fucking tag match? What the fuck difference does it make? This isn't war games. It's the NWO black and white versus Harlem Heat. They did a coin flip to figure out who got in the fucking ring first in a tag match? These guys went at each other. They screwed up everything. They hit each other badly and probably hard too because if it hurts and it looks bad it's the worst it all ended with vince flying off the ropes and stevie ray catching him and he was supposed to press slam him but vince the professional wrestler does not know how to post so stevie ray got him to his shoulders and he just threw him down vince go ahead it got better after that <laughs> slightly slightly well booker booker was in the ring when booker was in the ring everything was great I love, there's a point in this match when Scott Norton makes a cover, and he goes to cover Stevie Ray, and Booker T hits the ring to break it up, and Norton pops up and points a finger at Booker, and Booker throws in the brakes, and he turns and he leaves. <laughs> He's not fucking with Scott Norton. Why would you? The match goes way too long. Eventually, Brian Adams just, I, well, by, Brian, let me take it back. Brian Adams runs out and attacks the NWO. He's in the ring. He's laying waste to people. He, slide note, he press slammed Horace Hogan over his head. Yes, he did. <laughs> never let, because Horace posted. Never let it be said that Brian Adams was not strong. No, no, this is a DQ. All this carnage, the ref just watches, and then Booker hits a missile dropkick, and Stevie Ray pins Horace, and that's the end. Bad. That was bad. I realize that Stevie Ray can't do anything, but he really can't sell. No, they got the heat on him. If he's got to be in there as a sympathetic baby face for like five minutes, it's going to suck. <laughs> With Horace and Vincent. Like, at least put Booker in there to sell yes. and then have Stevie do like a quick comeback and go home. Right. Stevie in there trying to be the baby face in peril. Stevie Ray is Ricky Morton. Yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. My, 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 my. I got a bone to pick with the crowd in this match. Yeah, the crowd, the, uh, the crowd would not enjoy this match nearly enough. They the did not get, fans it. chanted boring. These fools. During Rick Steiner versus Knobs. I tweeted Vince and said, I know which match is going to be your favorite yeah, on and this week's Nitro. It may not have been public, but a, a few days before that, Lance actually jumped the gun, and he let me know there's a match on here I was going to like a lot. Mm -hmm. It was it was private, but then you you can you also uh, yeah. uh, tag Lance in the post. So I figure it's fair to say, and he said, "Hey, I know what match Vince is going to like." There was an incident <laughs> in like 1988. It was before Ken Shamrock became a fighter. Mm -hmm. He was still Vince Torelli, and it was two on one. Mm -hmm. But the Nasty Boys beat the shit out of Ken Shamrock in a hotel, almost killed this guy. Didn't they almost oh. throw him out a window? So, like, Knobs and Sags, they were they were tough guys. Yes. Oh, yeah. They weren't shooters or anything like that, but they, they were, were tough guys. They were bar fighters. They put Knobs in here with Rick Steiner. <laughs> they got in a fucking fight. Yeah, they did. It was there, awesome. There, there were more stiff punches to the face in the mm -hmm. first 30 seconds of this match than in Floyd Mayweather's entire career. But you know what I love about it every time Rick's in there? Rick and Knobs are in there, and they are punching each other in the face so hard back and forth. Yes. Bobby Heenan and Shivani are talking about how there's can't I can't imagine all, all these taters I've seen in this match. Yes. Something like Rotten that. Rotten Boys, he was a lot of taters in the ring. That's right. And then Rick just shoots him in. Watch his clothesline, brother. Mm -hmm. And they do a nice cooperative spot. Sure. And they beat the shit out of each yes. other again. <laughs> he went back to working. For those of you who may be a little young and missed Lee Steiner's career, Rick Steiner was like an oversized Ashii. Okay. Just a big, okay. mean mother who just hits everyone and, and wants you to hit him too. So they're throwing bomb after bomb after bomb. <laughs> Shawnee says, you know, Nobbs does not have the muscular physique of a Rick Steiner. You know, he's right. He is right he about is right. that. I'm going to write that down. Nobbs is, he, I, I'll give him credit. He, he never lost his wind, but this was a struggle for him by the end. Oh, yeah. They were working hard and moving a lot. Hey, Nobbs had the better cardio. I don't know. 
I think he did. When they were brawling outside the ring, there there was a spot where they brawl over by the barricade or whatever, and Rick Steiner's got his arms by his sides, and he's just kind of, uh, he, he got, was so well, that, tired. He got punched in the face. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking more about when Nobbs was in the ring. He, he was always able to do whatever they wanted to do, but he could not open his mouth wide enough to take in enough breath to fuel well, they his were body. Well, they were both gassed. Yeah, they they, they were two big dudes doing a lot of stuff at, uh, at a very fast pace. It takes a lot of energy to punch people in the face. There is... <laughs> and, and to get punched in the face. Right. To, to block a man's f- fist with your chin is difficult. There's a classic spot in pro wrestling that almost always sucks. A guy goes... One guy's laying down on his back in the ring. His opponent goes to the middle rope and comes off with like an axe handle. Mm-hmm. And the other dude gets his boot up. Yep. And he kicks the guy in the face. And it always looks dumb. Hokey. With one exception, this one <laughs> <laughs> when knobs when knobs comes off the rope and his head clobbers Rick Steiner's boot. He's probably so fucking tired. <laughs> he probably just he legit fell. Couldn't bro- even protect himself. Almost he broke just his fell leg. Off. He broke his leg with his chin. So Jimmy event- Jimmy Hart eventually bonks knobs with a dog collar. Oh. Rick hits the diving bulldog for the win. This was. Did you see knobs covered in blood by the end of this match? No, I believe it. He hit him so hard with that dog collar. Le- legit studded spiked dog yeah, collar. And and Nobbs is laying there and you can see it running down his forehead. I'll have to go back and watch. It makes it even better. And then he gets up and then it's the camera zooms out quickly. He is just covered in blood. They heard a good chunk of Randy Savage's win over Dennis Rodman from Road Wild, including, yes, the porta potty spot. Bam Bam Bigelow versus Perry Saturn. This was another one. Bigelow. Got pissed off to have to do the job here. I see. Keep in mind, he's coming off a tag team title run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He shows up. They say Saturn's going over. He's all pissed off. So he does the job. Technically. Jumps to his feet, no sells it, (laughs) and just beats the shit out of Saturn. So they they do the match. Bam Bam is the giant who will sell, but he'll weeble and wobble and not go down. And then finally at the end, the ref gets bumped and Saturn lays him out with an exploder. It went on too long, by the way. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a bad match, but it went too long. Can we talk about the funny spot where Bam Bam Bigelow did the lowest drop kick I've ever seen? To the gut. <laughs> he jumped high in the air. Maybe not. He drop kicked Saturn right in the balls. Yeah, he got him in the... <laughs> Saturn falls down, grabs his Johnson, yes. doesn't get up for like a minute. Yeah. Okay. It's like, you just drop kicked him in the nuts. <laughs> he did. So, Canyon runs out to try to interfere. Saturn hits him. Bam Bam picks up Saturn. Shane Douglas is out there doing nothing. Canyon comes off the top. He hits them, so Saturn falls on top. Mm -hmm. The ref counts three, so Bam Bam has lost, but then Canyon and Bam Bam both pop up and celebrate like they have won. I was very confused. I had no idea what was going on. Then it got... I, I, I I, I don't know if saved is the right word, but I forgot about that because the revolution clears the ring. And then they are mugging for the camera. And this is the quartet of pro wrestlers on my screen. You have the best wrestler in the company. You have Perry Saturn, who's just nothing but muscles and tattoos. You have Shane Douglas, who's all swollen up in a three sizes too small, bright neon yellow t-shirt. He stuck out like a sore thumb in this segment. Well, I can, <laughs> the man who stuck out like a sore thumb is Dean Malenko in his Dockers and plaid shirt. Right. Like the shop teacher who works with the JV wrestling team after school. And he's sitting there with these stars. I was laughing my ass off at Dean's outfit. He didn't even... <laughs> he didn't half-ass an attempt to look cool. Well, He says, these are on sale. The bigger issue to me, Vinny, <laughs> forget their outfits. Like, Benoit's awesome. Dean Malenko is like, he's a great wrestler. Mm-hmm. Like, he's not fitting in in the main event, but he's a great wrestler. Saturn is not a great wrestler, but he does cool stuff. Like, sure. he does the great flying elbow. He does awesome suplexes. Yes. Then there's Shane Douglas. Shane does the talking. He's old and he's fat. <laughs> he hasn't even Broken. been talking. Yeah. He tries his Pittsburgh plunge and keeps pinning himself because he fucks up his own move. <laughs> That's what sticks out. Mm-hmm. Sid Vicious versus Hulk Hogan in the main event. This was every Hulk Hogan <laughs> match from the 80s you've ever seen. No, it was way worse. It was, it was every Hulk Hogan match from the 90s you ever saw. Okay. It was Hogan and Sid... In 1999. I don't know how else to explain it. Like, it's terrible. I don't know what hurt on Hogan, but like... (laughs) Everything. He couldn't walk. Yeah. And they're trying to do spots where he hits the ropes and like, he can barely hit the ropes. Reminds me of that match he had with Flair where they were doing a match in like 2009 
and Hogan hit the ropes and his hip came out. Ooh. Ooh. Like, I thought that was going to happen here. Yeah. Like, Hogan could barely move in this match. So, they did a total cartoon match. Like, even by Hulk Hogan said standards. Excuse me, what's the match, by the way, Vinny? I just want to make sure we get this. Hulk Hogan... The champion. Yes. Defending as the challenger, Sid Vicious. The undefeated. The undefeated Sid Vicious. Okay. 63 and 0. For the title. In a one on one match with the World Heavyweight right. Champion. Hulk Hogan versus Sid for the title. Yes. Okay. So the announcers, this is the point where they were starting to count up all the beatings backstage and asking if this counted as wins. Mm-hmm. Is it, he beat up nine guys. Does that count as nine wins? No, it counts as zero. Zero wins is what it should. So they're going through all this stuff, a long nerve pinch. <laughs> When they did a very, very long nerve pinch, and then they raised Hogan's arm once, and then twice, and then he did the big finger wave, all I can think was, imagine anyone but Hogan trying to do this match on oh, Raw in geez. 2018. Dude, I may try it in Vegas this weekend. Sure. Okay. Well, I'll be all by myself. That's different. So, eventually, Hogan hulks up. Sid is so frightened when Hogan hulks up. As he should be. There is so much garbage hitting the ring. <laughs> so big He's hitting the ring already? Ha ha. I didn't notice till after the finish. Oh, the garbage hit the ring way before the finish. Oh, okay. Yeah. Big boot and leg. It was when Steiner hit the ring. Oh, yeah, yeah, Steiner yeah. hits the ring during a world championship match between Psycho Sid and Hulk Hogan. Rick Steiner runs out and starts beating up Hogan. And then so much garbage at the ring. So many full beverages. Yes. It looked like people had bought beverages and saved them to throw at the end. But you know what the irony of all of this is? He hits the ring... And the fans presume it's yet another bullshit disqualification on a Nitro show. On this show? They start pelting the ring with garbage. Charles Robinson does not ring the bell. No. No. It is not a disqualification. No. The match is continuing even though there's a man in the ring beating up Hulk Hogan. Not to mention they had used chairs earlier in the match. Yes. Well, that's... I mean, they, they had. Did you notice, right before the garbage started hitting the ring... Um, Sid was about to pin Hulk Hogan and all the fans stood up on the two count. Yes. And looked to their right. They've been doing this for a while. So you can see who's coming down the ramp. Yes. They have been so programmed and so brainwashed to expect something to happen. On both shows, by the way. Yes. No one ever just wins a wrestling match. Especially not in the main event. So Rick and Sid are beating up Hulk Hogan. Sting runs out to help his buddy, the Hulkster. He clotheslines Sid, and they both go out of the ring. And Rick, Hulk Hogan turns to Rick Steiner, and he beats him up, mm-hmm. and he leg drops him, and he makes a cover, and Charles Robinson looks around and shrugs, and he counts three. Yes. Yep. So to recap... And the bell rang after that. <laughs> the to recap, rang. Hulk Hogan... In a match with Sid Vicious, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. pinned Rick Steiner, yes. who was not in the match. No, correct. Meaning that Sid, despite not beating Hulk Hogan, is still undefeated. Undefeated. The winning streak is intact. Yes. Now, after the match, I don't know if you guys caught it, but Hogan was going through his posing routine and he had his belt and he handed his belt to Sting to hold it so Hogan could pose for the crowd. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's part it's of it. It's coming. That's part of it. And Sting- it's coming. I mean, even even before that, they they were Sting and Hogan were mugging for the camera, and they some, one of them said, "I'll see you in Vegas next week," and they said, "That's right." Mm-hmm. And yeah, <laughs> Hogan turns to Sting and says, "Hold this, so I can flex my giant muscles." By the way, for Sting the record, so annoyed. <laughs> on this show here, the plan was Hulk Hogan is about to turn heel. He just turned babyface. Yeah. Okay. And eventually, Sting just said, "Here, take your belt back. I'm leaving." And he did, and Hogan yeah. just kept flexing. I guess the idea that was that Hogan was going to turn heel, but they didn't want you to think they 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 figured you would figure that he was going to turn heel, so they brought out the red and yellow to try to convince you that he would be a babyface. But then it got over, so we'll see where it goes here. Mm-hmm. I do love that Rick Steiner. Every time he's in the ring with anybody else. He just bullies him and beats the shit out of him. Yep. Yeah. But the moment Hogan lays a finger on him, ping. he's just <laughs> bouncing hey. around like a ping pong ball. It's incredible. It's all about the money. It's all about this business, everybody. Let's let's get the finisher report. Hey, good call, Brian. This should be fun. This may take a while. How long does the song go? I can loop it. The finishes on this show were <sighs> DQ in a minute due to run in. 
DQ in a minute due to run-in. Pin after distraction in less than four minutes. DQ in two minutes due to run-in. Pin after interference. Clean pin. Clean pin. Pin in a handicap match after interference. Pin after interference backfired. Pin after interference backfired and all sorts of other shenanigans. Pin of the wrong man in a singles match that somehow didn't end the winning streak of the guy who was in the match and didn't win. 34 seconds right there. Nicely done, Vince. I've had some practice. Yeah. Wow. What a show. What a group of shows there. I'll say. I Nitro was fun by the end. I had a lot of fun watching sure. Nitro between Public Enemy. I thought it was a fun show. It's the just Benoit fucking match, stupid. The, well, it was incredibly stupid. Yeah. <laughs> You can be stupid and fun. <laughs> it was stupid and fun, absolutely. Dude, I just said the public enemy uh, clowns match was awesome. Yeah. We are at war. Thank you, Vinny. Raw was fucking terrible. Nitro, number 205, August 23rd, nineteen. Here we go. <laughs> Show. Okay, here, I'm going to read my first two sentences. Show opened with clips of Sid running wild last week, and then nothing happened for a while. Yeah, basically. That's what happened. Mike I just realized, by the way, that we are not all that far away from Nitro moving back to two hours. This show was almost two hours. It was two hours and seven minutes, but there was a KISS concert. They got rid of the KISS concert in the debut of the KISS Demon. Aha! But did you see the little graphic for next week? The KISS Demon is on the graphic. I can't wait. Well, I assume the Demon debuted at the end of the concert, right? Yeah. So they probably set it out the whole segment. Oh, okay. I, there's a couple of things here that made me think uh, 24-7 was the retro program thing they had before the network, right? Yes. Yeah. I believe this... For this uh, program may have been edited for that long before 24 7 uh, the network was a thing. So hmm. it was the old edited version, is what I'm saying. Mikey Whitbreck versus Chase Tatum. So, in the world of amazing coincidences, here we are on the day we learned Michael Cohen and Paul Manafort are going to prison, and WCW announces the president is stepping down. Now they're talking about Sting. But still. Yes. So, Tatum's the big white guy from Know Them at Soldiers. He mostly looked fine. What? There, he did one sloppy drop kick. It, he threw a drop kick and hit him in the hip. It was it was a sloppy drop kick. He put that. the drop and drop kick. <laughs> Jeez. So like he was good enough to sell his hip though. <laughs> so the announcers went silent for a full minute here, and this happened two or three times during the show. Massive bleed through from the truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what the fuck was that? The whole time. It may have been tech issues at the tech issues at the time. Uh, I don't know. It it probably stopped. Maybe an hour and 15 minutes into the show. Yeah. Finally. So Sid comes out a minute in. Maybe a little more, but he had somehow won 11 matches since last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A bunch of house show matches he lost and the Nitro that basically he lost last mm -hmm. week, even though a man not in the match was pinned. He's now 66 and zero, they say. Until he power bombs and pins Mikey and uh, Chase Tatum, and now he's 68 and zero. That's right. Then Sid has the temerity to tell us that we don't know how to count. He starts punching the air. He starts punching his own head. He starts ranting and raving about the year 2000. How we will hear only one name. Fans are chanting Goldberg. He says the name will be Sid. I love Sid. Sid's, Sid's good promos are very good. I love Sid. And it only got better as the show went on. This was like this was like the appetizer. Setting up that Sid main event. Okay, let me tell you something about this winning streak. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The... All-time college football unbeaten streak is held by the University of Washington Huskies. In the pre-World War I era, 64 games in a row without a loss. There was a tie in there, once, a couple of ties, but nobody beat them for 64 games. That sounds awesome, right? Mm -hmm. 64 and, well, 62 and 0 and 2. You look at the record, they were playing high schools. They were playing sailors in port with nothing to do. Goofs from local gyms. But you know what? That winning streak is so much better than Sid's. No shit. Vinny, it's fake from start to finish. But it's it's not even funny fake. It's just bad fake. Yes, where have you been? <laughs> we talked about this last week. Kevin is backstage apologizing to Kimberly for saying she was hot. Listen, <laughs> it would be funny, or it would be better, if Sid, who is a psycho, was making this goddamn thing up in his own head. Mm -hmm. It's stupid because that's the storyline. The announcers are buying the in. The announcers are telling us mm -hmm. that all of his losses are wins mm -hmm. and pinning men in matches he's not in is part of a win or streak. Or backstage. This or just powerbombing them and walking away. That's why this is bullshit. Yes. It gets stupider every week. Kimmin apologizes to Kimberly for saying she was hot. She accepts his apology and says Paige is just crazy these days. Yeah, and he says, you know... 
I want to apologize for last week, but Kimberly, you know the girl I've really got my eye on. Mm. And I thought, so you fucking lied to Gene. <laughs> ah. He asked you, and you said Kimberly, but there's actually another girl that you have your eye on. He was throwing shit. Why is it a secret? Well, maybe, maybe he's just shy. Well, he's talking about it on national TV right here. Well, he realized he made a mistake last he's week. He's playing hard to get. This filthy animal. They go to commercial, they come back, Goldberg finds Paige has laid Kimmin out. There's like five cameras back there to film this pull apart between <laughs> Goldberg and Paige. Goldberg was the very definition of swole when he walked <laughs> in this building. It's Holy true. fuck, he was gigantic. I watched these two shows back to back. I hated Raw, and at this point I wrote, Motherfucker, this is worse than Raw. Wrong! By the end, I was very wrong. Dude, I love when DDP calls him a meathead, and he gets so mad that he acts like a meathead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just runs after him like a crazy caveman. Bro. The Jersey Triad comes out for a promo. Paige claims Kidman was trained by Canyon and brought into the company by Paige. He has no business talking about Paige's wife. Challenges Goldberg for tonight. Notes they are in Las Vegas. Great city. Notes the last time they, he and Goldberg were in Vegas for Halloween Havoc, they blew the roof off the place. And that was a hell of a match. Mm-hmm. Sting comes out for a promo. This is, by the way, two promo segments in a row. And I'm not counting talking segments in between the in-ring promo segments. This is too much talking. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Duh. Uh, so Sting says, he's talking about the promo Hogan cut last week where Hogan had promised to kick his ass, only Sting won't say ass. Yes. In 1999, the absolute peak of the Attitude Era, he could only say butt. Yeah. Luger interrupts. Says Luger? Sting. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Luger just shows up out of nowhere. Yes. As always, he gets a massive pop. Yes. So you know they're just about to fuck him up again, like they always <laughs> like do. They always do. Yes. <laughs> he says, Sting always stood by always stood by me. You're the true backbone of WCW, but I must warn you, Hulk Hogan cannot be trusted. Sting takes a long time to say thanks, Lex, but I'm going to wrestle Hogan for the world title tonight anyway. And then I was like, wait a minute. Was Lex trying to talk Sting out of a title shot? Because the champion can't be trusted? Would there ever be a championship match if you only could wrestle a guy if you trusted him? I think it was more he was just telling him to be careful. Which begs the question, first off, where the hell have you been, Luger? I don't know. And you finally... I mean, think about this. He didn't know it's... I guess last week they announced the match. The last time we saw Luger, him and Liz were about to do a press conference. And it went bad. That's right, that's That's right. That's only appearance in like two months. Yeah. So I I presume that he watched Nitro last week and just thought, I must return and talk to my friend Sting. Lex, Sting, you can't wrestle Hulk. He might cheat. Yeah. Hmm. (laughs) Mike today is outside of the taxi line in Las Vegas. I I just left this town like about 12 hours ago when I was watching this. So my uh, Eric Bischoff is there in what looks like the dopest Uber ever. He denies that he will be the new WCW. Oh, we didn't talk about that. Sting is stepping down. Oh, we did. Yeah, we did. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, Eric Bischoff denies that he will be the new WCW president. He makes fun of Mike Tenay for listening to rumors on the internet. Because the word got out on the internet that he was going to be the next storyline president. So he had to change it. Hmm. Big thing here in 1999. Change everything if word gets out. Cat versus Buff Bagwell. Now they just don't plan anything. Right. <laughs> then word can't get out. Yeah. So Sonny Ono goes after Buff on the floor when Lex Luger comes out? I was so astounded when Lex Luger decided that he needed to interfere in a match with Shat and Buff. Yes. Why? So he's stalking Sonny Ono around the ring. The camera's so focused on this, they totally miss Buff hitting the blockbuster. Yep. And he pins Cat and wins. And as I wrote here, fucking Nitro. So far, the show wasn't very good. No! Oh. <laughs> but but next we got something that was fun. The Berlin video? Nah, DDP cutting a promo on Goldberg and calling him a big bald headed geek. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you're gonna call Goldberg something, there's actually a lot of things you shouldn't call him. One of them is a big bald headed geek. Goldberg came out here and he beat the shit out of the Jersey Triad. Like even by Goldberg standards, <laughs> he speared Canyon so hard, I thought he ripped him in half. He spears Bigelow half to death. Bigelow's a big, giant, bald-headed geek. He went flying. <laughs> he fucking just goes flying. Paige runs for his life. Literally. Canyon, I'm sure he thought he might die if he stayed in that ring. <laughs> Canyon did not let go of his ribs. He may have broken every rib in his body. And then Goldberg gets right in the camera, and he says, next week we're going to do this match. 
and I'll kill you. I'm gonna kill no, you. No, I'll kill you. <laughs> That's what he said. I wrote it down. I watched it like ten times. He then grabbed the mic and added, I'm gonna rip your throat out. Angry, angry Goldberg. So, yes, uh, yet another Berlin video. Moving on. Uh, Goldberg. <laughs> Moving on? All right. Well, you glossed over it. I thought you wanted to move on. What, the West Texas Rednecks? No, the fucking Berlin video. Oh, uh, who cares about that? That's my point. Okay. Jeez. Let's talk about the West Texas Rednecks. Ah! This music video. <laughs> the music video for okay. Southern Born, Southern Bread. We are on the same page. Okay. The yeah. good old boys music video was a masterpiece. Now, listen. I, I seem to recall that when we were when this first started and they did rap is crap. I seem to recall that I googled looking for rap is crap and I found Southern born Southern bread and I didn't like it. I may have been wrong. No, that's I might impossible. be imagining things. Yeah. This is Jeff Jarrett's music. Yes, with Kurt Hennig rapping. With Kurt over it. Hennig singing. Kind of, kind of singing. Well, closer to rapping, if we're being honest. I watched this over and over again. <laughs> I thought you would not like this. It made me so happy. It's got one of your pet peeves in it. May Excuse I? Excuse me? May I? Second verse. <clears throat> I wasn't listening to the music. It says, We got an old hound dog in a pickup truck. We like long-legged country girls who know how to love. I don't give a shit. The whole thing's supposed to be stupid. Listen. All I know is this. <laughs> You yell and scream when it happens on the I wasn't show. listening that close to the lyrics. Okay. It's Kurt Hennig. <laughs> you can't rhyme truck and love. He can rhyme whatever the fuck he wants. He should have sang. Yes. We got, we got, Craig, we, you're missing the point. We got an old hound dog and a nice set of gloves. When I do a contest <laughs> on the granny show and we're going to give away a prize, uh -huh. I want it to be good. I see. This is the West. This is Kurt Hennig, <laughs> Barry Windham. Kendall Wyndham. Right. Who the fucking fourth guy? Bobby Duncan. Bobby Jr. Duncan Jr. Yes. R they're a rock band. They're a country band. It's, of course it's ridiculous. That's the point. I'd be angry if it did rhyme. They were peeing in streams. Oh, I got a list. <laughs> I don't know what I mean. <laughs> These are the things. They weren't peeing anyway. They were fishing. Oh, no. No, they were peeing. No, no, I watched it ten times. No, they were peeing. I'll vote up right now. All I'll right, show whatever. the urine. I'll, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> they were also fishing. They did. Okay. These are the things that they did in this video, okay? I may have missed some pissing. They laid in a lake. Sure. They wrestled. They fished. Mm -hmm. They pissed off a bridge. Mm -hmm. Yes. They hung out. They got pulled over by the cops. Yeah, sure. They drove their cars. They randomly lit a table on fire in the middle of the night. What the fuck was that? <laughs> Why not? They rode ATVs. Mm -hmm. They fucking crashed ATVs. They almost died. <laughs> Shot of an ATV crashing. A fucking, excuse me, an all-terrain vehicle crashing. Yes. You understand how bad you have to drive to crash an ATV? Kurt Hennig just fucking goes flying. They fell into the water. They went to Las Vegas. Sure. Yeah. They played with children. And then their car broke down in the desert and they got a limo. Yes. That's the end. It's, it's too bad they, they didn't were see massive baby faces. This was like the best thing on the show times like a hundred. Th there's nothing on Raw with the exception of like the peak of Vince McMahon and Steve Austin that is better than this music video. It was so... I watch it over and over again. I was so happy. I was nearly crying tears of joy. You didn't even mention the beginning when there's like... Three, oh, yeah. Three children they against a fence? Not even that, Vinny. There's a picture of, like, a gazebo or something just something in the middle sure. of the woods. Yeah. I don't know why there's a fucking gazebo in the woods. That's where you put them. And you just see the thing, and all of a sudden, a child appears. Yes. Another child. Yes. And a third child. Yes. And then they're replaced by three so rednecks. One child turns into Barry, one turns into Kendall, one turns into Bobby. Now, keep in mind, there's four of them, <laughs> but they only use three children and three men. Well, I don't know why. I guess there just wasn't enough room. There may not have been enough kids. But, like, they can't even keep the camera steady no. <laughs> when children magically appear and then they're replaced. It's mm -hmm. like there's just cuts like this as they disappear. I loved it. <laughs> I loved, I loved, I loved, I loved this. I haven't loved something like this since my child was born. <laughs> So much I love this. Wow. And boy, there's more to come. <laughs> there is. Another baby? No. Well, oh. maybe someday. That'd be news. On this show. Baby on the show? <laughs> Lodi's fans threw a nitro party. Talked about how much they love Lodi. 
a masked man attacked, a food fight broke out. What in the fucking fuck was that? And as I wrote that, Shafani says, I don't know where that was from. <laughs> this led to Juventud Guerrero versus Lenny. Yes, he's no longer Lenny Lane. He's just Lenny now. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. We had interference. Well, they in call him Lenny Lane. Then they got to call the other guy Lodi Lane. Because well, that they made be abundantly silly. clear they're oh, that's right. brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not to this crowd. Mm. This crowd chanted, you are gay. Mm. And then something much, much worse. So I'm watching this match, and they're doing some stuff. And the crowd's being homophobic. And then I realize Juventud Guerrero's tights read, baby juice. They just had a baby. I guess. Yeah. Or he's going to go make one. Well, he just had one. Baby juice. So, Sid comes out. He power bombs all three dudes. He pins two of them to go to 70 and 0. Okay. But he's not giving this enough credit. When I saw that the build match was Lenny Lane versus Hoovy. Lenny. Yes. <laughs> I thought this is yes. going to be horrible. Yeah. Lenny and Hoovy. This was so much better than I expected. It was easily the best match I've ever seen Lenny Lane have in his life. Okay. Probably the best match on this show. It, what? No, 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 no. It went, what was better? It went so short. I, how do you... How? how? Uh, uh, there was a Benoit match. Actually, Benoit... There was more... There was a better there match There was two or show. three matches. Up to this. this point, this was the best match on the show. That's for sure. Okay. They actually did a lot of really cool stuff. Mm-hmm. And... Lenny did a big-ass dive. Lenny did a Huge. twisting flip dive off the post to the floor. Mm-hmm. Hoovy made a great comeback. Hoovy had one of his great They matches. both look great. Yeah. And then this fucker Sid comes out. They, they can't even... Hoovy can't pin Lenny. No. <laughs> well, actually... Or can't. vice versa. There you go. Because Lenny at this point was the Cruiserweight champion. So he would have had to pin... Hoovy. So Sid comes out. There's Charles Robinson with a 68 and 0 sign. He choke slams all three guys. Bobby Heenan screams, and I quote, I smell 69. <laughs> he pins Lenny and Hoovy. For some reason, he can't pin Lodi. I guess because they had a sign that said 70 and 0. And so the <laughs> math 71. would be wrong if he pinned all three of them. And then we get another creepy Sid promo in the dark. Where <laughs> Why are his promos in the dark? I don't know, but when he said Mr. Cameraman, he's so polite. <laughs> Mr. Cameraman, he says. Rants and raves about the year 2000. Hogan won't be there anymore. Sting won't be there anymore. Goldberg won't be there anymore. Only I will be here. Unless Because the master is in the house. Unless it's softball season. Sid, the Sid thing is so horrible, but he is so great. That's fair. I love him. That is fair. Like, if he could work, he would have been an all-time great. You don't say. But he is unbelievably wretched in the ring. <laughs> he is a bad wrestler. <laughs> now, are we sure oh. that the video was better than the concert? Because I'm not. <laughs> the West Texas Rednecks came out to play their song live. On the same show that Kiss, <laughs> Kiss. is performing live. So, let's be honest. They didn't perform live. <laughs> well, they didn't. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, so none of them can play any instruments. I was legit. Surpri- I checked and was surprised the guitars were actually plugged in. That's that's a stun to me. They're all out there playing. They're basically they playing. Can plug them in, but not turn on the amp. Well, sure. of course, of course. But I th- they even went to that trouble. Of course they did. So they are all out there playing air guitar on real guitars, <laughs> except for Barry Windham, of course, because he's the drummer. <laughs> Barry Windham drumming. <laughs> That's listen. I liked the video better, okay, but Barry Windham drumming actually brought me more happiness than anything in the video. He's having so much fun. That's the key to all of this. Yes, they're all having the time of their lives. We say it every week, but it was never more apparent here. No, this is a period of their lives. Those that are still alive, obviously, some have passed on. Where I would bet if I interviewed him, that they would look back and say, you know what? I had the time of my life doing mm-hmm. this West, uh, West Texas Rednecks they say, gimmick. They probably say there's times I made more money or was more successful, but I never had more fun. Never had more <laughs> fun than this. West Texas Rednecks. So Hennig and I think Duncan are doing like the dueling air guitar gimmick where they, they face yes. each other. Yes. And the, if you, the music's playing fiddles and keyboards, no guitars. <laughs> and Barry's back there drumming. <laughs> he's, and he's so happy. He's got the biggest smile on his face just going like this with these drums. I just loved it. Two things. First, Barry Wyndham needs a metronome. Second, <laughs> no, he doesn't. Second, Greg, you don't get it. 
No, it's I totally get it. It's good because it's bad. I don't want him drumming on cue. Brian, I want him I'm to be just playing along. Awful. Settle down. What's the second one? The second one is when Kurt got to the lyric about long-legged country girls that know how to love, even yes. though it doesn't rhyme with truck. Yes. The grin and smirk on, on Kurt's he face. He really drew it out the second time. Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. Love doesn't rhyme with truck. Long-legged girls who know how to... That's the whole <laughs> joke. Love. I love when it's over and they turn on Kurt's mic and he goes... Thank you all very much. I want to thank you all very much. And if that ain't country, I'll kiss your ass. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> if that ain't country, I'll kiss your ass. Wow. <laughs> well, the point is, it is country. <laughs> so he won't. <laughs> to think that Kiss had to follow this. <laughs> yes, the oh, star child and the demon. They, never, they never should have come out on stage. Craig... I know, I'm that just playing That goddamn along. Kiss segment was, I believe, the lowest rated segment in the history of Nitro. Have you seen Kiss lately? So, hey. I did, actually. Uh, 2014. Yikes. It was the day after I got married. Don't, uh, don't look up 2018 Kiss. All right. Horrible. Hugh Morris and Brian Nobbs and the Barbarian versus Dean Malenko. Uh-huh. <laughs> Dean Malenko and Perry Saturn and Shane Douglas. You did what I told you not to do, didn't you? Well, don't listen to the sound, that's for sure. Anyway, Vinny. Oh, I thought you were talking about the match here. I mean, you Googled Kiss. Yeah. Did you find the band or something else? Oh, I put band in there, okay. you idiot. He, yeah. He's looking at he's looking at five Jewish grandmothers. It was, yeah, yeah, that is exactly what we call them. When, when, when uh, uh, Paul Stanley is out there, we were in Portland last night. <laughs> Everyone boos. That's funny. They said the same thing about you. He so, also did an entire song. Uh, 2014. So what is he, 61 then? Yeah, so he's in that. Yeah, he yeah. did an entire song in his body stalking with his back to the crowd, so we could all admire his ass. Wow. Yeah, that's a Kiss was the very first concert we went to. Really? Yes, it was on. He the, kept uh, going. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, they were good then. Hmm. I forgot you were old. Go ahead, Vinny. <laughs> Three years older than you. That's fucking old. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> Decrepit. All right, where were we? I had more fun listening to you guys. Yeah. So, Bar- Barbarian, Knobs, and uh, fucking who? Horace. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd be happy to explain this weird-ass match. <laughs> okay. Benoit, Malenko, and Dean Douglas against Hugh Only Morris, Perry Saturn. Brian Knobs, no, and Barbarian. No Benoit in this match. Oh, that's Douglas. right. He came in later. Yeah. The match was bizarre, but it was fine. It, it, it was a, 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 every trio's match you ever saw. Rick Steiner comes out. Hit Sat- okay, the ref is distracted because there's all kinds of chaos going on. Steiner comes out to hit the bulldog on Saturn. Was he distracted? I don't think the ref was distracted at all. Well, th- he was Who looking cares? at the guys fighting on the floor. I, Steiner hits the bulldog. The ref's back is turned. Fine. And then Steiner goes to leave, and he crosses the ref's vision. The ref is like, oh, look, Richard Steiner is in this wrestling ring. <laughs> oh, well, all does count three. So Nobbs pins Saturn. Benoit hits the ring. He challenges Steiner to a U.S. title match. And Douglas cuts a promo, out with evolution, in with revolution. Very controversial statement today. Mm. He's challenging Triple H and his pals in the future. Hey, all I know is... And if you is, think about it, that'd be a fun match. <laughs> Benoit cuts his promo on Rick Steiner, and like I immediately was analyzing it as if it was a shoot. Because I thought, man, Rick Steiner's going to try to rough him up. But Benoit ain't going to back down. Right. Benoit's got great cardio. He does. And Steiner gets tired. So if he can if he can withstand the early <laughs> onslaught by yes. Steiner, yes. he'll beat the shit out of him. I was so excited at the idea of this match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by thinking about what could actually happen. Hmm. And that's basically what happened, but we'll get to it. Now, Brian, earlier you said Hoovy and Lenny had the best match on the show. I want you to apologize You're to right. Violent Jane and the Insane Clown Posse. Yes. yes, they did have a better match. Insane Clown Posse versus Rey Mysterio and Billy Kimmon. Dude, both clowns were good here. Jay was awesome. Shaggy was mostly fine. Well, Shaggy is very much like Enzo oh, in that yeah. he can take ragdoll bumps everywhere sure. and nearly kill himself. I pretty but sure he was he, in, did. he was in the right place for everything. Mm-hmm. I, I would like to take exception with Tony Schiavone who talked about the limited experience of ICP, both of whom were wrestling far longer than Kidman. Yes. Although not as long as Ray. No. They did try... Uh, they failed to catch Ray on a dive, but Ray came up short, so I'm blaming him. Vampiro tries to interfere. Kidman whips Shaggy into him, and he pins Shaggy. 
And the Deadpool continues to attack until Eddie Guerrero makes the save. This was so much fun. Mean Gene calls out Hulk Hogan for a promo. I will summarize five minutes for you in ten seconds. He's true to his family. He's true to the Stinger. He's still going to kick Sting's ass. Referred to his son as Nitro Nick. Nitro Nick. Rick Steiner versus Chris Benoit. Yeah. I could have watched this match 20 times in a row. They clearly went out there. They had a finish planned. <laughs> Everything else will call in the ring, and they just had a fight. And it was awesome. They're just beating each other and beating each other. And as Brian noted, Rick is big and scary. And so he overwhelms Benoit by punching him in the mouth over and over again. And he beats him up for a long time. But then, as Brian noted, Benoit has better cardio. That's and right. And he outlasted the monster. And he made his comeback. He goes for the headbutt. Steiner pulls the ref in the way. And then he tried to use the belt as a weapon. Saturn hits the ring and attacks Steiner. Sid attacks Saturn. Benoit recovers and chases them away with the belt. This was so fun, I didn't even care there was no finish. Yeah, this was this was this was not quite everything that I wanted, but it was close. It was it was, it lived up to its billing. It was not everything you wanted, but it sure was everything you needed. Sure, yeah. yeah. And then Benoit cuts a crazy promo about clicks backstage. This, by the way, was the week that Eric called that meeting and chewed everybody out and said if anybody wanted to leave, he'd give them the release. Oh really? Oh yeah. wow. And then Sid cuts a promo and says to be the big man, you have to wear big boots. <laughs> he has started talking about how small they were. But yeah. that's, that's it for you. And then Benoit tried to get a revolution chance oh, started. That failed. That did not work out. That Hogan promo with Gene, by the way, do we mention that or do we gloss over it? No, we There's nothing to say, but go ahead. Well, the one thing to say is that he it's been a week. They're already booing the shit out of Red and Yellow Hogan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> one week. Yeah. Harlem Heat versus Barry and Kendall Wyndham. All right, so they're way better doing concerts. Sure. This match was pretty bad. When this started, I thought to myself, this would be so much better if it was just Booker T and Barry Wyndham. Mm hmm. And I probably, because Stevie Ray was the worst, worst here. But it was not very good. Everyone's out of position, turns into a mess. The Rednecks try to interfere, it backfires, they all get laid out. And then the ref, somebody takes the ref, Hennig clonks Booker with a cowbell, he puts Kendall on top. Brian, who's your favorite referee on Nitro? No, oh, my main man, Nick Patrick. Is it because of things like this where there is a pinfall behind him that he actually is supposed to count, but it takes him another 10 seconds to turn around and count? Yes. Yeah. This was a bad match. But then, as they're leaving, Kurt is singing his song, the Wyndhams are raising their tag belts, the happiest cowboys you ever saw. This is so good if you ignore the wrestling part. Normally, I hate stuff where, you know, someone's given a belt or, you know, a belt's up for grabs and something stupid, but... You just described Raw. Exactly. But with that said, the West Texas Rednecks should only defend the titles in karaoke contests. Don't ever want to see <laughs> them in the ring. great idea, actually. They're welcome to come to Vegas and join our party. Sure, yeah. We had a great time doing karaoke until like 5 a.m. It was awesome. Yeah, you flew home. Yeah, it was Sunday night. Oh, Sunday. Yeah. That was Friday. Hmm. Yeah, it was great. We got drunk on Korean liquor and just sang our throats out. It was fantastic. But speaking of drunk. I was also, I, I was more drunk on the sweet party. Yeah, no. This is what I did after the sweet party. No! Did you get caned? What happened there? It was a <laughs> giant bruise. Yeah. So you, it's almost like rope rash, actually. How much did you pay the girl to do He it fell to? down <laughs> gambling. Yes. What? <laughs> Please tell me. Please tell me what like let this. Let me explain this. Hold on a second. Let me tell you what I want it to be, and then tell me what actually happened. <laughs> He's at like the blackjack table. Sure. And he loses his bet, and he says, "Hey, double or nothing, or I'm out of money. So if I next hand, if I win, you give me my cash back. If I lose, you can punch me." No, Vinny. Damn it. I, I was what? thinking it's a spring-loaded slot. Okay, everyone, listen to me. Here's the problem. Rob was gambling, and he fell down in the middle of it, and he scraped his side. Right. That's not okay. Here's the thing, Rob. Your big mistake was telling them that you were okay. You oh, should yeah. have gigged. Sure. Rolled around with a puncture wound and gotten your payoff. Hmm. You know, had, had I had a blade with me, I might have thought of that. Well, you need to always have a blade on you. Don't you know that? But, yeah. Always have a blade on you. So we had another Berlin video. Buddy Rose actually did that gimmick in the grocery store. <laughs> he fell and gigged. He, he would he would he would walk and there'd be like something and he'd slip, fall, gig, and he'd get a payoff. Wow. Yeah. So 
they've been hiding him for Berlin. I don't advocate this, everybody. I'm just telling I, the story. I didn't think we were allowed to tell Buddy Rose stories. <clears throat> well, the man's not with us. I can't tell a story about him. I'm sure Buddy told it a thousand. I'm times. sure he did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, he he would be upset we're not making a bigger deal out of it and, and yes. congratulating yeah. him more. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, they've been they've been pushing Berlin for like three weeks, but there's so many videos per show it feels like months. Vampiro versus Eddie Guerrero, and it was an awesome match. Yeah, it's pretty good. Suplexes mm-hmm. and chops and flying kicks. Eddie hits a superplex. He goes to the frog splash. The clowns returned. Eddie tries to dive onto them. His foot slips. Oh. He came up fine, but it looked like Shaggy broke his leg. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, they both came up selling their knees. Yeah. I presume they were fine because Shaggy was involved with the finish, but... He was, able, he was able to drag himself to the apron for the finish. It was all downhill from that botched dive. It was, but the first half it was... Not even the first half. It was like a four-minute match. The first three and a half minutes were great. Tony so, mentioned during this match that there was a upcoming search for a new Nitro girl. Yes. Oh, Stacy Keebler. Mm-hmm. Now, did they know, know that going in, or was it a legit search? I don't think search? so. I think it was a legit search. <laughs> so Vampiro throws Eddie into Shaggy and then pins him, and then Kim and Ray run out to chase the Deadpool away, and they're setting up a six-man tag, which, based on this show, is going to be awesome. Sure. Hulk Hogan versus Sting. They dragged out Michael Buffer for this one. They did. I, I did not write down his whole entrance. In fact, I skipped most of it. I was short on time. But I did notice that he acknowledged Lorenzo Fertitta and Mark Ratner in the, in the, at That's ringside. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hogan was so slow. He was? He had his knee taped up. Yeah. I mean, they were trying to do a wrestling match early. I like this. It was okay. I like this match. They worked hard, especially Hogan. For Sting, this was a Sting match. Hogan, Hogan's working. That's the best way I can put it. He was working. How about that spot where they did the chin lock and fell asleep for two minutes? <sighs> There's one reason. Because it have been, they've been working very hard up to that point, and yes, they did a long chin lock. But, Brian, it's Hulk Hogan. You can't Hulk up if you don't do a long chin lock. Uh, well, you know. You hadn't thought of that, had you? No. Plus, he's old and probably didn't need a break. So, Hulk hulks up, and it was funny. <laughs> I know Sting's wrestled Hulk before, obviously. But how many times was he the baby face or... How many times was Hulk the babyface and Sting was feeding the Hulk up? He had no idea what to do. It was also the slowest small package in the history of man on this. Face. It was a sloppy cradle. It was a slow package. Yeah. yeah. So Hogan r- runs wild, goes to the leg drop, misses. Stinger hits one big splash, but then Hogan gets the boot up and they're both down and Sting tries another one and misses. And then Sid and Steiner attack for the DQ. Oh. <laughs> Thunderous booze. Now, you know, this was the moment where sometimes I'll watch the show... And it'll be something like the West Texas Rednecks or the Benoit Steiner match. And it's always like, how did they die? And then. Oh, the company. Shit like this. And it's like, that's how they died. Every fucking week. Bullshit DQ in the main event. Last week, people were pelting the ring with garbage or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just the same old shit every week. So. The brawl continues. Goldberg and Lex come out, and the heels bail. So you've got Hogan, Sting, Lex, and Goldberg in the ring. Hogan's very happy with Sting, shakes his hand, promises him another title match. Very happy that Goldberg is there to come to help him out, but is not happy with Lex. He's Now, he's still babyface Hogan, so he's not like angry at him and put his finger in his chest, but they do not shake hands. Hulk is upset that Lex doesn't trust him, but he's going to prove he can't be trusted. This was one of those shows where they weren't sure who was turning. So they were just doing stuff. Yeah. And someone here is going to turn. I won't give spoilers. Yeah. But somebody's going to turn. and There is no real direction to any of this except Sid Streak, no. I guess. No. And here's the thing, everybody. I love the West Texas Rednecks video and everything like that, but the reality is when you're running a wrestling promotion, Raw, the main event shit was they took very seriously. The championships they largely protected, except for this week when they did this swerve bullshit, but... The main event stuff, the main eventers, that's all very serious. And then they just put whatever bullshit they want on the rest of the show. Problem with Nitro is they got some good stuff on the mid card. They got some funny stuff. They got some entertaining stuff that I really like. But when it gets right down to it, when it's main event time, what's going to sell your tickets and sell your pay-per-views and sell your house shows, it's bullshit. That's why they died. And it's only going to get worse. Now to add on to that, the main event of this show, as it aired live, was the Kiss concert. 
That's right. They followed that with a freaking kiss concert. They played God of Thunder and debuted the demon who rose out of a (sighs) casket, which you can all see on YouTube, by the way. And by the way, you do a Sting versus Hogan match with a bullshit DQ, and the show goes off the air promising you're going to do it again next week? Yeah. (laughs) What? (laughs) Stupid. Well, here you go, Vinny. This may be a long one. The finishes on this show were... Some shitty ass bullshit. I can't even say that. Some shitty ass bullshit to add to the fucking dirt worst winning streak in the history of sports. Pin after shenanigans. Match canceled when one guy saw his friends get slaughtered and ran for his life. More bullshit to add to the fucking dirt worst winning streak in the history of sports. Pin after interference. No finish because the ref got laid out. Pin after interference. Pin after interference. Double DQ in the main event. There was not one clean pin or one clean submission on that entire fucking program. <laughs> wow. A three-hour show <laughs> wow. with almost nothing at stake in most of these matches. No one can get You know what? Team. It was still better than Raw. By far! <laughs> we are at war! Nitro sucked, and it wasn't even funny. No. It was just bad and boring. And, and repetitive. it was un opposed <laughs> it may as well have said the same hour of tv three times in a row you've been trying to beat raw for months and months and months and finally there's a fucking tennis tournament and it's your opportunity unopposed to turn this war around give these fans something that's going to make them want to tune in next week the show opens there's- mean mike and tough Tom versus William Regal and Dave Taylor. He's not making that up. Disorderly conduct. There was no video package. There was no pyro. There were no dancing girls. There was no star coming out. Not even entrances. There's four dudes in the ring. The bell rings and they start wrestling. And two of those dudes are Mean (laughs) Mike and Tough Tom. Maybe they can face Brutal Bob and (laughs) Tough Tim. When they fucking started their careers, I got to come up with a name. I'm going to be mean Mike. I'm going to be tough Tom. Fuck, we're going to make a million. See, Mike, I'd be marvelous Mike. No, mean. Magnificent Mike. Nope. Mysterious Mike. Mean! He's none of the above, though, Vinny. Well, he was not. This man was not. He's not magnificent. Or mysterious. <laughs> he's certainly, well, it's mysterious why they were on this fucking show in the opener. Well, he was on the show in the opener, so the city could come out for the DQ a minute in. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you think I'm going to complain about that, think again. <laughs> the announcers outright... They, they, this is virtually a direct quote. You know something exciting is happening because the fans aren't looking at the ring. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> Just outright deliberately burying the wrestling match. They also finally, after all these weeks, have said, Sid is making up his own count. Quote, and I quote, a count we obviously have to go along with. I see. What? I don't know. Because he'll beat him up? I guess. Well, it is Sid. It's believable. So he power bombs disorderly contact. He pins them both. He's 75 and 0 now. He wrestled no house shows that weekend. Was he 73 and 0 on the last show? Do uh, you think I'm yes. paying attention to this? I kind of am, actually, because no, I'm just I'm fascinated by the way they do this. Apparently, he didn't work all week. Took a week off. He's, oh. he's earned it. I mean, the week before, he got like 13 matches in the meantime. <laughs> it's like 13 house shows. I agree. It is highly irregular. It's stupid is what it is. It's not, it's not a well-done streak. So he's cutting this promo about how the numbers will stack up. The crowd starts chanting for Goldberg, and Sid warns them, don't make me do something I don't want to do. Finally, he says, all right, and he puts the mic down, and he power bombs him again. Okay, that was cool. You know what I loved about this is he power bombs and pins disorderly conduct. They move him up to 75-0. and zero. Later, he power bombs them again, but he cannot pin them. Well, that would be silly, Brian. You can't, That's unfair. You can't pin a man twice You're in only night. allowed to pin the man once, according to Sid. Yeah. So fucking dumb. So they're talking about Berlin's debuting on the show, and they, they talk about Berlin and all the other stars arriving via limousine. Then they cut to the parking lot. Are you where, done with Sid? Yes. Sid cuts his promo. He says, I, I said that right. In the year 2000, I see. There will only be one name. And every fucking time he says that, the fans start chanting Goldberg. And I'm just astounded watching this because they're making up a fake streak for Sid. It's phony as can be. 
It's so dumb, but these goddamn fans are into it. And they want to see the other man with the streak, Goldberg, take out Sid. Cool. So we go to the back of the parking lot where Lenny and Lodi are not in a limousine. They're in a taxi cab. And security won't let them into the building. They are mobbed by fans. Eventually they got in. Just astonishing, Vinny, because even though it's a fake streak, you got one large man who doesn't lose. There's another large man who doesn't lose. And the fans just want to see those men. <laughs> That's fight. all they want. They all want so bad. It's so fucking easy. And people have to make this so fucking hard. Hence, the main event of SmackDown here tonight. Had a video recap of Goldberg and Paige and Hogan and Luger and Sting and Sid and Steiner. I watch this show every week. I take notes every week. This video left me bewildered. <laughs> well, it's a bad video. I think I write this every week on Nitro. Nothing happened for a while. Yep. This is dead air. It's got three hours to fill. But it's not even filled. It's just there. Well, they try to fill it. I mean, we had 10 Hulk Hogan promos. There were a thousand Hulk Hogan <laughs> appearances in the show. Gene calls out Luger for a promo. Still wearing a shirt. Luger says Hogan spent three years showing Hulkamania had been a sham. Now we're all supposed to believe him? He claimed to have damning physical evidence that Hogan was a con man. And everyone started to boo him. And he said, you can boo me. But my evidence is on its way to the building. Concrete, irrefutable, irrefutable evidence. Yes. Can you really call a photograph of something physical evidence? Yes. Sure. It can? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. By the very definition. It's printed out. I, I know, but like, if there was a crime and you found a skull, seems to me that's physical evidence. Mm -hmm. If you take a photograph of the skull, I find it hard to believe that that's also considered physical evidence if you don't have the skull. I think physical evidence is opposed to uh, circumstantial evidence. I see. Hearsay. Well, this definitely was not... Witness testimony, for example. Let me think about this. Is this circumstantial? It's just a photograph of the guy. Berlin and his interpreter... I need a lawyer on this show. Una Lundorf. Yeah, Una Lundorf. That's that's not me. That's not a Muppet. That's the actual name of Berlin's mm -hmm. interpreter. The hot blonde they found to pretend to understand German. Last the Rue versus Scotty Riggs. What were you saying, Brian, about how this show was unopposed? I fucking died <laughs> when they trot out Scotty Riggs and Lash LaRue. And I thought, all right, Sid's coming out again. <laughs> the fucking fans are chanting, we want Sid. Oh, Sid. I what? thought we want Sting. What okay, we better want Sting setup sense. for Sid? Yes. The fans do not want to see this match. No, no one does. So, of course, no Sid. No Sid. Lash LaRue and Scotty Riggs wrestled for, I don't know, eight minutes as the crowd chanted boring. It wasn't their fault. They did what they could. Now, they did not get Sid. They did get the Deadpool coming out. This is ICP and Vampiro. Yes, they were called the Deadpool like one time, and I'm sticking with the name. So, once again, two, two twice in two matches, the announcers say, something exciting is happening. Nobody's looking at the ring. <laughs> Vampiro comes out. Get He tells Riggs, you owe me. This is after Riggs wins with the fame. Yeah. Actually, no, he, he distracted Riggs first, but then Riggs won anyway. I see. Yes. So, Lash makes his comeback. Vampiro climbs in the ring. No one cares. Nick Patrick's just standing there. Just looks at him. Mm -hmm. Riggs wins with a fame master. Then Vamp says, you owe me. And Riggs says, no, I don't. Vamp says, yes, you do. Riggs says, no, I don't. And they leave. Yeah. Fuck this show. <laughs> it's, it's bad. It's not a good show. Revolution comes out for a promo with, and I quote, their own t-shirts and everything. Dude, Revolution, what in the world's happening? This is the deadest gimmick. Nobody gives a shit. They're trying, it's actually Shane Douglas. He's the talker here. Yeah. He's trying this rah-rah well, he speech to get New York behind all of them. New York does not give a shit about any of them. There are even boos yeah. as he's trying to get them over. They all issue a challenge. Believe it or not, the best talker of all of them was Chris Benoit, not Shane Douglas. And then Dean says, out with the evolution. What evolution? What's going on? I don't know. The, In with the revolution. They've been saying this for weeks. I know. What's the evolution? We don't know. No, I didn't, no idea. I, I, was un, I was unaware there was an evolution in WCW. <laughs> and it had to end. Maybe he's yeah. talking about the beginning of man. You think about it, wouldn't the end of evolution just mean the end of the, the species? You would think. Yeah, don't do nah, that. No, not necessarily. I think we're evolving every day. Mm. Yeah, backwards. This was no good. <laughs> this was no good. 
F- oh, fuck. Lodi and Kaz Hayashi. I haven't seen Kaz in Let me say something about months. this, everybody, okay? I never had the most exciting matches on the indie scene, okay? I disagree. But I rarely had a bad match. I rarely had a match that fell apart. You want to know why? Because when I put a match together, I considered what can I do and what can this other guy do? Idiot proof. And if I asked the other guy, if I said, hey, let's do this spot, I could look in his eyes as soon as I said that and immediately know whether this was a good idea or not. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't a good idea, I said, forget about that. Let's do something else. If 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 he suggested something I didn't want to take, forget about it. Let's do something else. Like Peach wanted to give me a high kick. I fucking hate taking high kicks. I said, no high kicks. Let's do something else. This, This shouldn't be that hard. These two fuckers go in there, and somebody had the bright idea, let's do a -a tilt-a-whirl head scissors. (laughs) It's probably Kazuyashi's idea. Sure. Lodi clearly had no idea how to take it, but nobody said, let's do something else. They fucked up this tilt-a-whirl head scissors spot in the most hilariously fucked up manner. They both fall down like just two complete idiots. A bad match... Everything sucks. And this is with Kaz Hayashi in there. And finally, Lenny and Lodi switch places. Kaz pins Lenny, who's not in the match, but he is the Cruiserweight Champion. Mm -hmm. Which leads the announcers to say, well, shouldn't he be the Cruiserweight Champion right now? No! He's not in the goddamn match. With the booking lately, that's not a bad question to ask. It's true. I don't blame the announcer for wondering that. If it was on Raw, there would have been a title change. This was so bad. I'm so happy you guys handled that one. There's I nothing... I did not want to revisit that. It was bad. I can only say, if anything, you're being too kind. They also, during this match, for whatever reason, put up a countdown clock for the new video game, WCW Mayhem. Yeah. That's when the game goes on sale. Mayhem. Yeah. Bobby Heenan was so excited about Mayhem. He was marking It's like Mayhem. watching TV. Right. It's it doesn't like, even look like a video game. You can control the TV. I was like, dude, wait another decade, buddy. So I didn't watch all the G1, but I'm confident there were more blown spots in this match than that entire tournament. Okay. Including the very first spot and the very last spot. I would say in the entire history of the G1, (laughs) everyone in fucking history. So Kaz wins in the West Hollywood Blondes at a rocker plex. Fucking miserably bad, I wrote. Gene brings out Hogan for his first promo of the night. (laughs) Can I say what Mean Gene said when Hulk Hogan came out? Yes, please. Well, Kogan comes out, and Mean Gene says, and I quote, I have not seen so much yellow and red since the canary hit the blender. Yes. Yeah. I have so many questions. <laughs> what is going on in Gene's house? Why is there a menagerie in Gene's house, number one? I mean, if this were Filthy Tom's house, I can understand. Why is there a blender running? Just because. <laughs> well, maybe he was making a protein shake, and there was a canary. And he forgot about it? Well, sure, protein. Yeah. I- Canaries are, I'm sure there's some protein in canary. <laughs> Not a lot, yeah. but some. God, I was at the store the other day. Oh. What the <laughs> hell could this possibly wow. lead to? I wanted to get a donut, but there's a bee okay. in the donut area because okay. the glass doors are closed. Got bee got in there, yeah. like, fucking son of a bitch, there's a bee in there. So I open up the goddamn doors and I'm like trying to help the bee get out. I finally help the bee get out. I shut the doors. The bee goes right back in through the crack. I'm like, okay, he wants fucking donuts. I just left. <laughs> you got That's like here. a canary in a blender, kind of. <laughs> That's how I thought about it. Wow. You asked. Your relates are unrelatable. In what way? <laughs> the bee was looking for food. Well, the canary was looking for something, too, and it ended up in that blender. I see. Why the fuck else would there be a canary in the blender? I thought Gene put it there. I don't think he put it there on purpose. He said it hit the blender, as in an accident. Hmm. He didn't say, I haven't seen so much yellow and red since I put the canary in the blender. So Hogan's cutting this promo, and I thought I was going crazy because well. there's weird music in the background. <laughs> yeah, there was. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm muting the TV, it's gone, I unmute it, but it's back, it, but but no one acknowledged it. They're like, getting ready to debut the Maestro. The maestro. They, they acknowledged it in the next segment, which made me feel so much better. <laughs> I do have some grasp of reality left. You were the only one. So Hogan promises he will not stab Sting in the back. <laughs> he says when Lex comes out to produce his evidence, I will be... I'm not making this up. Oh, you're not. This is in Death of WCW verbatim. Eating fruit and being cool. 
I'm going to be in the back eating fruit and being cool. What? <laughs> to see what evidence Luger had. He promised to kick Luger's ass if Luger tried to frame him. See, the announcers are plugging VHS tapes. Mm-hmm. They're interrupted by piano music and they acknowledged it. And yes, this is going to be the Stroh. Let's Craig and LaParka versus Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio. Oh, man, thank God. You know what's funny thank about this match? God! I'm reading Dave's review of it, and he's talking about how fat LaParka is. Well, he was not Ooh. small. If only he knew! <laughs> oh, he get better. Oh, fatter. my God, he is so fat now. <laughs> he is fucking gigantic. His gut is just totally spherical. So he's a big, fat skeleton, is what you're saying. Yes. It's oh. impressive. It is impressive. Well, here in this match, he was less fat. He was a the best clown you ever saw, mm-hmm. dude. They were all great. They were all great, but he he was great in that manner of you know I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna do the most spectacular pratfall you you've ever seen. I'll, I'll do 14 flips, but then land on my ass. Blitzkrieg is in there. He's cool, but he's also 12 million miles an hour. And finally, Eddie just had to literally tackle him and take him to the ground <laughs> before somebody got hurt. So by the end of this, all four guys are awesome. There's just bodies flying everywhere. It's it's fucking great, and. Eddie's comeback out of this world. There's a big four-way. Eddie pins Blitzkrieg with a frog splash. That ruled. It's a great match. I wrote for five minutes, WCW was the hottest promotion on earth. That's right. Mm-hmm. And then Berlin came out. <laughs> what the fuck is with this filter they put on the camera? It's bad. They put some goofy filter on to make it look all washed out and blurry. Is that what it was? So it looks washed out and blurry I on thought... national fucking television. <laughs> I thought it was to make him look whiter. I thought it was just they didn't like, like the he arena. wasn't white enough. Well, so Berlin's crew, it's Alex Wright with he dyed his hair black and got a funky haircut. Mm-hmm. He's wearing sunglasses and has a cane. Uh, was it Una Lundorf, I believe? You wrote it down. You just said it like yeah, 10 minutes yeah, ago. But that was that, 10 minutes ago. Close enough. Close enough. Okay. Una Lundorf. Uh, a couple of bodyguards and they all come out. Two heavies. A couple of heavies. So the gimmick is they all know what's Alex Wright and they know he speaks English. But he refuses to speak English. It's great, great language. heel gimmick. So he rants in angry German, and Alex Wright's angry German promos are 10,000 times better than yes. his lame babyface English promos. Yeah. And then the. What a shocker. Una Lundorf translates, but she's not actually translating. She's very clearly reading off a cue card. Mm-hmm. And then by the end of this, this turned out to be, turned out to be a, a lost struggle <laughs> trying to read off this cue card. So. It's <laughs> so good at the end. He says something at the end. And she just totally forgets what she's supposed to say and just freezes. And Alex Wright just stops and he just looks at her. Mm -hmm. And? And He doesn't say anything. He just watches this happen in front of his eyes. The great thing about this this new character is he's got this V carved into his head and it looks like a, a mohawk almost. But he kept the sideburns. Yeah. Okay. I didn't notice, but he's Berlin. So he explains via his, his uh, uh, translator, a consortium of German businessmen have turned him into a wrestling machine. His wrestling is an art, and he has chosen the first man he will destroy. It is Buff Bagwell. Buff Bagwell? Well, he explains. Buff Bagwell represents what Americans are all about. Bullshit. Excess, <laughs> narcissism, and self-indulgence. Absolute bullshit. <laughs> Should have been like Hacksaw Jim Duggan. That would have been way better. But it's still a mid-card geek. You want to call out Goldberg? Yeah! You Go- kidding me? Goldberg comes out, spears him, angle over? Well, no. I mean, Goldberg doesn't answer, but at least call out a star. Hmm. Anyway, uh, that was it. That's it went on happened. too long. Yeah. It wasn't terrible. For one night, at least, it got over. Because it's an angry guy shouting in German, and they're going to chant USA. Jeans on the ramp. And how comes a man with doll hair... <laughs> Did you notice that? A very disheveled like Oh my god, out. he's got his hair all disheveled. It looked like a doll. Like that weird doll hair. Let's talk about conditioner. Oh, <laughs> dude. Like he had not had long hair for like 15 years at this point. It's true. So. I didn't no know that later when he came out again, he'd combed it. Yeah, look at he's showered. <laughs> Between this segment and that. So Lex's story is he was minding his own business in the locker room and that bastard Hulk Hogan jumped in from behind. And then he had... <laughs> he said, Hulk Hogan busted out the windows on my vehicle. Yeah. What? I don't know. That's absurd. You thought maybe did, the evidence was in the car. Did anyone go to check to see if his windows were busted out or if he was just bullshitting? Well, I'm sure. It... Okay, what happened in this match? What, Kendall and Barry Windham versus Kenny Chaos and Prince Iakea? That's the one. You jumped from a promo to a match. I did, I did not do a segue. No. I looked at my notes. I was coming and had to jump ahead. 
Well, I was waiting for Sid. He didn't come out. Mm-mm. Kendall worked the entire match and won. So Barry, did so did Ikea. Barry never tagged. There him. were no tags in this tag team yeah. match. Then Barry cut a promo. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, let's let's go back to talk about how Prince Who Ikea has... gives a shit. You wanted to be longer with tags. Remember when Dude, he... Dude, this was the perfect length. Dude, do you watch this match? Yeah. Remember, it wasn't that long. Remember when it's Prince... It's not this long. Oh my God. When Prince Ikea came cursed, back from, from New Japan, and he was awesome for like a month. No. And then he regressed. <laughs> I do not remember this. Okay. I think it, it's an it, urban it, legend. It, it, like, it, Dean Malenko used to be really happen. good. It did happen. And then... A week or two ago, when he had that six man tag match, when I said nothing that embarrassing ever happened in my entire career is his performance. Mm-hmm. He comes out here, it's Prince and Ikea and Kendall win him. No one tags out for like three minutes. And in the middle of it, Kendall drops a knee and pins him. <laughs> yeah. What the hell was that? I went back and watched the whole thing. I figured. Why? Ikea must have been hurt. No. No, he's just regressed. He's horrible. They now. would have beat up Kenny Chaos if he was hurt. Yeah. So, okay. Wow, something bad on WCW. I think you're he trying hurt to figure himself. Out I, honestly, I honestly think he hurt himself trying to skin the cat. I think he pulled his uh, own throat into the ropes. I see, maybe. Hmm. So then they call out Harlem Heat. Harlem Heat comes out in brawl. If he got hurt, why didn't he make a tag? I don't know. That's what I was trying to figure out. So the utility of their plan was I will hit six moves in a row and drop a knee on you and pin you? That seems like what the plan was to me. Okay. Maybe they went through the curtain and they were told. You got 10 seconds. Dude, <laughs> if you had 10 <laughs> seconds to get yourself over in a win, wouldn't you use something cooler than a knee drop to win? Do anything. Do, you're a fucking Wyndham. Do a Lariat. It's Kendall Wyndham. I realize as Wyndham's go, you could do better. <laughs> Who cares? So they Harlem Heat him. Harlem Heat comes out and brawls. They make covers. The ref's counting three. What the fuck is happening? <sighs> it's really bad. It's awful. They keep brawling. They did make covers. <laughs> the, ref, the ref counted three. I think the bell rang. They hogtie Booker T. Hogtie Booker T. And they stomp him and they leave. Like three weeks ago, this show was good. Yeah. What happened? Gene brings Lex out for his third appearance. He's got a fucking... How can this show only be half over? Envelope! <laughs> God. <laughs> Dude, how? <laughs> Never heard that word delivered from that cadence. So, yeah, Lex is an envelope. And he uh, calls out Sting. You haven't been doing the bills and shouted, I need an end. Hello. <laughs> to your wife? I have not. Okay. And if I did, it would not go well. So, Lex claims, he calls out Sting. He says, when Hulk was supposedly rehabbing his knee, he had been busier than any of us thought. He says, Hulk Hogan was the one who was driving the Hummer that ended Kevin Nash, or nearly ended Kevin Nash's career, and I have proof. Kevin Nash was back the next week. I don't... He didn't even sell it. I know. They don't even remember that? <laughs> no. Fuck! So... He, he punched out the window to get himself out. He's so bad. Man. Lex pulls out the photo. Hey, at least he opened the fucking envelope and shows what was inside he it. He opened the envelope, he pulled out the photo, and then holds it in a manner so that neither Sting, nor Gene, nor the camera can actually see it. <laughs> Eventually, like time passes, they eventually get a shot of it. <laughs> it's Hulk Hogan standing next to a Hummer on a farm or something. Sure. It's white, too. This was his irrefutable proof. I don't think Lex is a lawyer. This was his physical evidence. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Hogan comes out to defend himself. He says this doesn't prove anything and then says, how did you get this photo? <laughs> yeah. Could he possibly have sounded more guilty? Yes. They all bickered. DDP drops Hogan and runs away. Hogan no-sells it. Yeah, what the hell was that? DDP ran in and hit the guy from behind. Mm-hmm. They they cut to a shot of him leaving the ring. They go back to the ring. Hogan's on his feet yelling. Yeah, at Sting. I, I was like, is this a replay? He knows. <laughs> he didn't sell it at all. No. So they're shouting at each other, and Sting asks, how many times have you stabbed me in the back already? And that is a fine question on Sting's part. Hogan says, if you believe that photo, you're as bad as he is. Listen, this was a decent little angle. It cast doubt on good guy Hulk Hogan. There was physical evidence. Mm-hmm. I thought this was okay. I thought everyone's acting was was good. It's way better than anything you'll see on Raw nowadays. I give this a thumbs up. One of the only other good things on this show. The great little touch is in the photo, Hogan standing next to a white Hummer wearing an NWO shirt. That's right, the black oh, and white. Oh, I didn't even notice that. No. He was, yeah. The black and white NWO shirt. Yeah, yeah. He was hanging out with the geeks on the ranch. <laughs> 
Buff Bagwell versus Van Hammer. The show is unopposed. Bagwell versus Van unopposed. Hammer. They put this on there. You could have stopped at Van Hammer. And by the way, where was Buff when Berlin was calling him out like 10 minutes ago? He's a coward. Well, he's Great question. Getting his gear on for this match. So... <sighs> boring as fuck. Boring mm-hmm. as fuck. Everyone Hammer gets the heat. Look at the ramp or whatever and you can't blame him. Okay, so... Van Hammer does like a chin lock or something or a, a snap mirror or something. He's got Bagwell in front of him. And he like grabs his head and slowly walks a circle around him. Yeah. What the fuck was that? No idea. Then he starts posing with him like he's a Muppet. Dude, there's so much more to talk about on this show. So blockbuster finish. Buffs the baby face, hit a low blow in front of the referee, and hit the blockbuster, posed instead of going for the pin, and then got the pin anyway. <laughs> and this blockbuster, by the way, where you fly off the ropes, grab your opponent's neck, and crash to the mat, the lugs kick of the week. Yeah. Is this that hard? Yeah. You can have the cat win a match and give him the kick of the week when he fucking well, kicks the guy? Well, he wasn't on this show. There's no one who could have won with a kick on this show? Who, Mike Enos? I don't know. Ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> on an un- Opposed Sweet Jesus. show. We had fucking Evan Courageous <laughs> versus Mike Enos. Star cast death of WCW panel. Air this show. Jesus Christ. The fans are immediately chanting we want Sid. Mm-hmm. Guess who doesn't come out? Sid. Sid. Enos is so pissed. He, like, he didn't think... That they, that he thought... Mike Enos thought this Long Island, New York crowd... Yes. I'm going to go out there with Evan Courageous and I'm going to blow the roof off. And he turned on him and he was so angry. They have this terrible match. Mike Enos goes for a pile driver Dude. and does not know how to hold onto his legs. Nope. I was so scared. He, listen, everyone. If you're taking a pile driver, you grab the guy's legs so your arms protect your head. It also bends his legs to ensure that your shoulders, not your head, land on his lap. Evan, like, reaches up so his hands... Or on, uh, uh, who the fuck was it? Enos' yes. hands. I forgot his name. <laughs> like, like, he's fighting, trying to break the grip, so he'll land on his head. His head's dangling down, totally exposed. Thank God Enos was able to drop him without killing him. The Deadpool comes out, because why the fuck not? They beat up Enos, and Evan gets the win. Nobody got over. What? <laughs> Nobody got over. Vamp tells Evan he owes him. Yes. I'm like... What's happening? Why is Vampiro recruiting Scotty, Riggs, and, and, and who the fuck was this? Evan Courageous. Evan. We need a new flock, apparently. Uh. And then... Then it happened. And then... Music begins to play. God of Thunder. They explain it is, in fact, God of Thunder. How did they get this licensed? I'm sure Kiss just gave it to him. I... We don't want it. There's a <laughs> fucking... God damn. Don't think that's accurate, but I laugh. Giant fucking box. A kiss box. It's all spiky. Sure. The door opens, and there is Crush, dressed up as a member of Kiss. Was this Crush? Yes. That was Dale Torborg. Just tell, yeah, it was Dale Torborg. It was, a, well, I guess it ended up being him. It was spo- No, I think on this one, I think it actually was Brian Adams. Okay, really? He cut a promo. Yeah, he did. It sounded just like him. Okay, sure. I mean, who gives a shit, but like, he goes, ah! He goes, You're not no, here. Just like him. Yeah. Not now. You got more out of this than I did. Not this time. Ah! He shouted something at Vampiro. He had no mic. We could all steer, still hear him, and he did, in fact, scream. He had headset on like the fucking drifter. Yeah. Oh, okay. And he goes, ah! And fire goes off. Mm-hmm. And they went to commercial, and this show fucking blows. This was so unbelievably wretched. Brian Nobbs and Hugh Morris versus Dean Malenko and Shane Douglas. Dude. For like the 18th time on this show, I've written, what is happening? A wretched match. They're all hitting each Does other. Does Dean Malenko know the rules to tag team wrestling? I don't think there were rules in this match. Then why Everybody was, he... <sighs> was brawling all over the place. Yeah. Everybody's fighting each other. Remember Scott Dickinson? He's the referee. <laughs> what the fuck happened to that stupid angle? So, Hugh Morris and Mrs. Moonsault, I have no idea who the legal man is who in cares? this match. Douglas does a dive off the post under the heels outside. It's just terrible. His he, knee... He can barely move. He didn't dive. He fell. He <laughs> fell. Shane Douglas fell on everyone outside. His knee clonked Brian Nobbs in the head. Now, Nobbs is pissed. He gets up, starts potatoing Dean like it's his fault. Yeah. Dean is on the floor. Nobbs drops a giant elbow on Dean Malenko on the floor, to oh, which yeah. Dean just stands up and starts punching the guy. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what happened. Everyone got counted out. Yeah. Is that what happened? Yes. That was so bad. It was horrible. This revolution. It's awful. It's horrible. 
And when you think about what what the design of the the program is, it's talented guys in the undercard who are given a chance to shine. This is that, that should write itself and get everyone over. Everyone's coming out worse for it because they are looking terrible. Yes, <laughs> their promos are horrible. The they have no horrible, charisma usually. together. Yeah. Their matches are bad. I do not buy that they are all friends. The only one of any value in the group is Benoit. Mm-hmm. He's stuck with these other three anchors. I'm glad the American Revolution turned out better than this one. It sure did. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd still Dude, be Dude, fucking every revolution turned out better. I don't think there's ever been a revolution. Lance a lot Lincoln, the Evolution Revolution turned Failed out better. Failed fucking this. revolutions turned out better than this one. <sighs> uh, at this point, I wrote, fuck you and fuck this show. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Okay. Gene, in the next segment, he begins by noting there's a hot girl in a bathing suit in the crowd and she's getting ejected. Yeah. Just draw attention to what everyone's looking at. And then he makes out Hulk Hogan for his 43rd appearance in the show. <laughs> they boo. They boo. And I checked. There's a half hour more. I expect him to come out at least nine more times. Hulk Hogan says, I want to thank all of you fans for sticking up for me. And they go, boo. <laughs> and he looked nervous. Well. Like you could see it in his eyes. He was not expecting to be booed here. He also promised he'd never stabbed his son Nick in the back. Yeah. Well, God, I hope not. not. It's like nine. <laughs> so, says next week you'll prove Luger wrong. He wants to wrestle DDP tonight, but DDP has a match with Goldberg. Therefore, he must ask Goldberg to step aside. So he calls Goldberg out to formally ask him. Oh, man the man. fans were so angry at the idea of, of that match replacing Goldberg and DDP. Unfortunately, Goldberg offered a counter proposal. Yeah. He also has new stupid music. No, he's had this. I know, but it's terrible. Megan. Why would you change Goldberg's music? Because it's WCW. <laughs> They also got the the licensing for Megadeth. Yeah. Amazing. So he wants to team up with Hogan to face the Jersey Triad. Hogan accepts. Page comes out. He accepts. I like Dallas Page is standing next to Bam Bam Bigelow. Mm-hmm. But he calls Hulk Hogan and Goldberg bald-headed geeks. Right. Well, Bigelow is bald-headed, but he's not a geek. Ah. Well, that's, well, that's true, but neither is Goldberg. Yeah. Well, I mean, none of them are. Yeah. But maybe he's just watching some Paul Jones earlier. Hmm. We'll get that line there. Disco Inferno comes out for a promo. You know, it's funny. I teamed with Disco Inferno a week ago. Have yeah, not even. <laughs> have you mentioned that? And he turned on me. And 19 years ago to this day, Rick Steiner got revenge for me. He did. Sure. <laughs> okay. Disco it, got what he had coming. When you look at here. it, it really is a, a finely crafted story. It is crazy. <laughs> Things work out. My hired hand, Rick Steiner, yes. came out of here and beat the shit out of this guy. So Disco declares himself a superstar, a sex symbol, a booty-shaking badass. He's living La Vida Loca. He's pretty fly for a white guy. He calls out Rick Steiner. <laughs> So Rick's in the ring, he removes his TV belt, he hands it to the, the official, he is undoing his jacket and carefully laying it in the corner. The whole time, Disco is saying, you're not an icon like me, you should take off that belt and put it on my shoulder yourself. And Steiner just levels him from behind, beats the shit out of him, suplexes him 15 feet into the air. Oh my god, he gave him this German, <laughs> he grabs him around the waist. And he doesn't just go back. He, goes, he oh. lifts him straight up in the air, and yes. then he goes back. I believe this is called a German suplex because Disco actually landed in Germany. Yeah. And uh, he hit him with a diving bulldog and won. Disco literally got zero offense. He was destroyed you, here. You picked a fine assassin, Brian, 19 years Thank ago. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I got my revenge at last. This was among the best things in the show, which is saying very little. So he keeps beating Disco. <laughs> Sat- I traveled through time for this revenge. Saturn comes out to make the save, and they had the funniest brawl ever. Because Saturn is trying to work and take turns, and you know, you hit me, I hit you, and Steiner's just throwing hands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just throwing bombs. And finally, Saturn hits a super kick, and Steiner bails. I just love it. Like, they're basically having a real fight. It really was. Yeah. Rick Steiner, he does this all the time. He gets in there and he just yeah. takes advantage of his opponent. Yes. Beats the shit out of him, mm-hmm. but then gives him a spot. It's <laughs> right. exactly what happened here. Just give him one. Just, just one at the end. Oh, Jerry Flynn and Chris Benoit. This was fun. Oh, my God. This was, I could have watched this 20 times in a row. This was very good. I think what happened here is Chris Benoit went to Jerry Flynn backstage, and he said, just fucking kick me as hard as you can. Sure. <laughs> I could see that. And it turns out Jerry Flynn's kicks look a lot cooler when he's not worried about, when he's not afraid to just drill a guy. Sure. Because all his kicks are fucking awesome. Benoit's Benoit. Everyone's going crazy. Heenan's marking out. And Benoit hits the headbutt, and the first family attacks for the DQ. Chris Benoit couldn't even beat Jerry Flynn before they shoot their fucking angle. Jerry Flynn had to be protected. <sighs> so, Revolution makes a save. Benoit says, first family, there's only one way out of this. It doesn't say. There's a pause. And the answer say, what is it? 
And Benoit moves on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he starts calling out Sid. Are they doing war games? There's no way they're doing the revolution <laughs> versus family. the first family in war games. <laughs> I got to find out. The funniest war games ever. I don't think that's it. I mean, that's that's what you had to... It was four on four. Sure. It's fall. I, it is fall brawl. Oh right? Oh, they might. Yikes. Let's find out. Oh, no. Fall brawl 1999. I mean, it can't be worse than... Oh, I don't 98 know. with the warrior. I, I, I'm pausing. <laughs> I actually don't know if they do one in 1999. I'm terrified to learn the truth. Let's see. War Games match. Let's see here what we've got. I should just probably look at... Just like Fall Ball oh, 99. Yeah. Here we go. All right. Uh, no, they didn't have one in 1999. Whew. There you go. 1998 and 2000. Okay. Hmm. So what the fuck were they even... <laughs> what was this? Who the fuck knows? Oh, Hulk Hogan and Goldberg versus the Jersey Triad. This is funny... <laughs> Because Goldberg is a killing machine, and everything everywhere he touch, everywhere he goes, there's carnage and devastation and ruin. And his tag team partner is a bigger cartoon than Mickey Mouse. So a great contrast in styles in this match. Well, here's where it goes. At Fall Brawl 1999, the family, the first family, faced the revolution. It was Hugh Morris and Brian Knobs versus Dean Malenko and Shane Douglas in a no DQ match. It sounds wretched. Why didn't we just see that on the show and it was wretched? So they're doing this match. Hogan makes the big cartoon comeback. As, as he's doing the comeback, Goldberg spears uh, Canyon in half like a missile. Just goes through him. Again. It done it before? He did it last week, too. And That's right. I, yeah. I, it's just the way Canyon takes the bump. It looks amazing. Yep, yep. So as, Hog as Hogan is dropping the leg and getting the pin on Bam Bam... Uh, Paige hits Goldberg with a chair, but the ref just counts three anyway. Like, like Hogan, uh, Bam Bam goes down, Paige hits Goldberg, Hogan says, fuck, I gotta win now. Quickly drops his leg, quickly the ref counts three, then they do whatever. Goldberg no-sells no -sells the chair anyway. A total mess, essentially. But it's fine. The the good guys have come out, they've conquered the bad guys, the lead bad guy has run, run away, so there's still revenge to be gotten on him. Fine, fine, fine. End the show, everything's good. No, there is more. Sting is backstage. What is Sting doing backstage, you ask? Sting is looking for Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Where could Hulk Hogan be? He's in the fucking middle of the ring, you dunce! <laughs> the biggest dipshit in all of wrestling right here is Sting in 1999. He kicks in the door to Hogan's locker room, and there's Randy Savage. Conveniently, there's a camera in the locker room, which makes Sting's reaction as well. And Sting is very disappointed. Disappointed, not, not angry that this madman here is, is here and there, all kinds of danger and carnage might ensue. He's disappointed like he's found out his son got a poor grade on a test. He just shakes his head. He shook his head. I can't believe it. And Hogan's going nuts in the ring. There are three things I'll remember about this match. And by remember, I mean I'll forget them as soon as the show's over. Goldberg spearing Kenya to death. Goldberg taking a diamond cutter and hopping up immediately mm -hmm. and not selling it. And Hulk Hogan having to get the pin with a leg drop in the middle of everything. Why? Because he's Hulk Hogan. I don't think he'd ever pinned Bam Bam Bigelow before, so he had to put, put that notch on his... Uh, Dude, this was such belt. a mess. It was a complete mess by the end. This was a bad, bad show. These were two very bad shows. Mm -hmm. Nitro was worse. Raw at least had the Rock and Sock connection. Nitro had Benoit and Eddie. Nitro had two good matches, but... It was also three hours long. It now. was three hours long. That's I don't a know. Solid point too. Mm. There are no winners here. Well, let's do the the match gimmick, and then the we'll find out. Gimmick and go home. Let's do the sock gimmick. The finishers on this show were one man who was not in a tag match pinned two guys who were clean pin more or less. Another pinfall involving somebody who was not in the match. Clean pin more or less. Well, Vampire yeah. was in the ring, but he didn't do anything. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, clean pin. Clean pin when one guy apparently got hurt and I have no idea how. Pin after interference. Double count out in a tag match. Clean pin. DQ due to run in. And more or less clean pin in the main event. I did like that match where Vampiro walks into the ring and sits on the turnbuckle like as the ref's counting. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I you don't know. couldn't wait. I really hated both these shows. They were very, 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 very awful.